this is in four years the most hyped I've been about Tiger, and I think it's legitimately justified. Four Play, presented by Barstool Sports. We are live from Greyhawk Golf Club, the Barstool Classic Championship. This is the fifth one. Fifth wow. Barstool Classic Half Championship. Uh, this is a big year. You want to win a five-year. It's kind of a monumental one. So back-to-back uh, -back years that we've been here at Greyhawk. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Eldrick Tiger Woods uh, competed over the last four days. Four full rounds. World Challenge. I'll be honest, he looked healthier Sunday, I thought. And he looked even on Thursday. He had some comments that came out Saturday afternoon that were the best comments I think I've probably could have fathomed or imagined over the last couple of years. This is by far, for me personally, on a personal Tiger Woods friend and fan level, the highest hype I've been about Tiger since 2017 when he came back. So I guess realistically since the President's Cup 2019, that was yeah. the last time I thought he played like he was the best player in the world. Right. This is in four years the most hype I've been about Tiger, and I think it's legitimately justified. I said this a, a couple weeks ago when we saw the first video of his walk come out. Like, I just don't know why he didn't have this surgery in, initially because it, it has allowed him to walk and I think to practice a lot more than he has in the past. You're right. The way he's the way he's talking is like he's about to make a run of playing events. You know what I mean? Yep. It's not like, oh, I'm going to see how the leg reacts. Sunday, right after they asked him, he said, you know, my game's not just not there. My body's almost there. It took me a while on Thursday to get into the speed of things. It was quicker on Friday. I got right into it on Sunday. He goes, and when I'm playing, it'll just be that speed at the beginning. He knows what his body feels like. He knows how much better it is, it seems, than than last year. And we talked about the score was was almost sort of irrelevant this week. It was was he going to make birdies and was he going to look okay on Sunday? His worst round of the week was Thursday. He shot under under par for the last three rounds. He made 19 birdies through four rounds. Did he? Yeah, he made 19. Ooh, that was a uh, that was close, close to the pin. And uh, a lot. yeah, he, he just it couldn't 15. it couldn't have gone uh, apart from you know if he had been a little sharper around the greens, but from a physical perspective, I don't think it could have gone much better. Nineteen birdies for a guy that is named named Tiger Woods, who will eliminate a lot of the bogeys and double bogeys just by playing more, is an amazing sign. I know he got, you know, swept out of the building by Scotty Scheffler in terms of how much he lost by, but at the end of the day, if this guy, he's finishing these rounds even par, but like you're saying, he's going like four or five under on the front and then on the back he was two or three over it's like he's just he's he just has mistakes because he's not playing a lot and that's just he's he's very very rusty in, in the game aspect but he looks healthy and that's the and only the, thing we can care about well the biggest thing for me was that i just was don't like, want to make people think that we're moving goalposts because i feel like i was getting a lot of tweets about that where it's oh like, really oh tiger woods is back he's gonna dominate and then all of a sudden it's like he finished almost dead last in the tournament and it's like oh well now like no, he finished look, 20 back it's like i just want part of the process it's the right. process we've always and, known and like to me it was the key was obviously the health if he's just healthy he can figure it out he's the best player of all time but also that his game wasn't in shambles like when he came back after yeah. the scandal that year 2010 there was like low points where he was topping tee shots at the US Open Couldn't chip. and then a couple years later he came out and he literally had the chipping that was for so like bad a year and he yeah. like at, he shot 85 down the street at TBC Scottsdale so it's like as long as we didn't see that whereas he's stepping up on these tee boxes on the first hole where he's as nervous as you're going to be piping it down the middle and crosswinds yeah he shot he's 20 strokes back from sky so he's got work to do he's rusty but the fact that he's hitting it out there a mile he's got 177 he was kind of cruising at on ball speed which is higher than the pga tour average so he's like moving it out there pretty good his putting like one thing that they were really talking about that i had never impressed us was that he's always said as long as i still got my hands mm -hmm. i can compete and i was like it's not like luckily his the arm didn't almost get amputated. Right. Thing. It was his leg, which obviously affects a lot of things, and he can't walk and the whole deal. But if he's got his hands, dude, he can chip and roll the putts. On Thursday, even though he shot that 75, he was rolling it like you wouldn't believe. He was, like, pouring in putts. He just looked great. And you're like, for this guy that's 48, Brandon always talks about your nerves start to fray and your putting goes and all that. Like, for his hands and touch and all that to still be there, for him to be hitting the ball, 177 ball speed, uh, and to get through the whole thing and say on Saturday, basically he had the most positive stuff to say, which is that's like five days into the whole thing. When you get there Tuesday, practice round, Wednesday's the pro amp, Thursday, Friday, Saturday's out there. For him to have on Saturday talk about the thing I'm most excited about 
is how I have felt physically knocking off rust. I mean, we can knock off rust at home, but it's so different come game time. As I said to you guys earlier in the week, game time speed is different than at home speed to be able to knock off some rust, have this week, show myself that I could recover each and every day. That was kind of an unknown. And he basically said he like surprised himself at how well he could recover. That's fucking full systems. Go, man. Yeah, and, yep. and Will Zalatoris, who was also making his first start after like a major surgery. Tiger beat him. Tiger beat him by 11 shots. Coming back after a long layoff is difficult to do. You're just you're not going to be a and sharp. He's making the birdies. It's yeah. just there's a couple mistakes here and there. Yeah. He's finding himself in bad situations. He was missing the green um, in tough spots. That golf course also, if you miss the green in certain spots off those greens, was giving all these guys shit because of the yeah. type of grass they were talking about. It. Brandon was talking about it like crazy. If you missed the green to the right on like the first hole, you weren't making it up and down. Tiger just kept finding himself in those situations. It's just rust. And like we said, this guy is getting healthy, and there's a lot to look forward to. He's going to have a full schedule next year, a schedule that we never even anticipated was possible. We thought this guy was going to play the Masters each year if we were lucky, just one tournament a year. We were like, this guy's just going to rev up for one tournament, and that was it. This guy might play 12 tournaments next year. Yeah, I mean, 12. The caveat, <laughs> I don't think it will be 12. One a month, Dan. The caveat, there are 12 months. I, math checks I think he's thinking more of like the meaty part of the golf calendar from February through July. But Once a month, one a month is 12. Is 12. But <laughs> hold on. There's yeah, still yeah, there's he, he was also optimistic after <laughs> Riviera, you know what I mean? So it's like the body is still very fragile. You know, there's still is this guy playing in the president's cup. A lot of what do you say? Is this guy going to play in the president's cup in Montreal? Yeah, I don't think so. What do you mean? I Fuck just, off. I this just, guy's going to play. I, in just, think it's, I just want to see it. I want to see it sustain. I want to see him play a tournament and then play another tournament like a month later and look the same and progress. He's, there's rumors that next week at the PNC he's not going to ride. He's going to walk. If he's what looking for more hell? reps, if he's really? looking for more reps, that I mean, look, it's very, very encouraging. What we saw this week was very encouraging. I just, I want to see it some more. I want to, I want to see another. I want to see him play two tournaments a month apart and look better in the second one and just keep progressing because it's a lot of times he's he's been optimistic. He said this and then we'll get one of those you know tweets with the weird font with the weird. Oh background. no 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 dark blue. That's background. what I'm saying. Like it's Stop just it. we, 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 we don't know that we don't know that we can that we're gonna be able to avoid those for for another year. That's true. Listen, you're being you're being a bit of a pessimist, but you're also realist. a realist is probably the best way to look at it. But I I mean, it couldn't have gone any better. Would be my I agree with that take I from think, this weekend. You know, in, and I get that people are like he lost by twenty strokes. How could you possibly think this guy's back? We've been through enough of these. You know how good Scotty Scheffler is? <laughs> He's yeah. Do you have any idea how good he is, God, dude? He just can't miss. He just hits it so. He's perfect. like a well perfect golfer too. at times. I'm just like, what's going on out He's, there, dude? And his footwork, I think, gets crazier every week. And the way he swings, you're like, ooh, what was that? And it's just dart, yeah. dart right at it. How is it consistent? Place. I don't that, know. That it's footwork. like consistently inconsistent. Chevrolet, baby. Chevy.com slash electric. We love electric vehicles a lot. Once again, on this show, talk about the future. The future. You got to be in the future. You got to be prepared for the future. We got charging stations and we got a bunch of EVs and the models that you've known for. We also talk a lot about history on the show. Over 100 years, they've been making cars with a bow tie and Chevy. Now they're doing it all electric, and they're fantastic. Yeah, we're here at the Barstow Classic, and Chevy's a really big sponsor and um, you know partner with us. We have specific parking spots right when you walk into the Barstow Classic just for Chevy people, yep. people that own Chevys, and it's filled. I mean, this whole entire parking lot is filled with Chevys. People we like have a Chevy. Chevy. Um, on, I think it's the, what hole is it? The Lacker 11th Rock. hole on the Raptor course mm, here at the Barstow Classic? On the Talon course. Talon course. Yep, 11th hole. If you get a hole-in-one, you just win a Chevy Bolt EUV. So um, they're here. They're here in a big way, and they're the best. I mean, no one can talk to me about a more American name than Chevy, Chevrolet. We went to NASCAR. We saw it. When you see that emblem, when Dale you Earnhardt. see that, Dale Earnhardt, just Gosh. pure American iconic. class. Eco uh, I was going to say iconic. Econ I was going to say iconic. Econ it's electric. Econ 101. Yeah. Iconic. Yeah. <laughs> iconic. Iconic. That, uh, could be, that could be their next ooh, EV pitch. Economy. Economy. Iconic. Ooh, iconic. Wow. I think you got it. <laughs> I say Chevy that. Chevy is Sick. iconic. Iconic, baby. Oh, shit. <laughs> is there a Chevy person here at the Barstow Classic? <laughs> we'll find him. Yeah. We got to sell that shit. We'll Where's find him. Uh, trademark. She's Public like, trademark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. TM. Intellectual yeah. property. TM. Iconic. Iconic. Holy smokes. That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Uh, Chevy's camp. the best. We love them. Chevy's the best. Go check them out. Go check out all their models. You're going to love them at Chevy.com slash electric. That hat is so fucking bad. I have I can't stop looking at it. I'm sorry. I have to talk about it. 
We we're at the Barcelona Classic Championship. We gave out the worst hat we've ever given out to the pe- pe- the people that are playing it. Yeah. Would you have noticed if I hadn't said something? I think I would have. <laughs> so <laughs> it uh, looks I, like you I, won I the championship. I did. You're, I won. you're walking around with a hat Congrats. that says "Classic Champ." <laughs> I won. So now, how many people are playing in this? 200. 210, 210 people so, so. will now go home with a hat that says Barstool Classic Champ on it. Yeah. And it's like, oh shit, did you win? They're going to have to have a conversation regarding the hat. Dude, like, kind of comes off. Listen, too, like no, it's like actually a... the championship. I didn't win. We actually had a bad dog shit day on, on Monday, and I couldn't. Like, why are we doing that to people? <laughs> it's, 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 I won. It, it kind of comes off. <laughs> it's the worst that ever. It kind of comes off like you're a vintage champion, too. Like, that guy's a classic champ. Classic champ. <laughs> Listen, as a guy, <laughs> I won. As a guy who knows how to wear What hats. is that? As a guy who knows want- how to wear hats, that is a disgusting fucking hat. <laughs> it feels really good to be able to be on the other side of it. There was a big pile of them this morning, and I needed a hat, and I was like, there's going to be a huge I'm, pile I'm going to wear that. Well, they're oh, now they're in people's bags. God. People are wearing them. The problem is, too, I, I know there's some people out there that are like, this hat's sick. They're going to listen to the show that are playing. Well, it's like a like, free hat. It's a G4 hat. It's really nice. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like quality. the best quality hats that you can probably have right now on the market. They are yep. so good. Just our logos are just the logo we put on that. Is a miss. Why did Class- it say championship? Classic <laughs> champ. A, also, like, why does it? Have- <laughs> You're not the champ. You're <laughs> yes, gonna I am. win it. My hat says it. No, I am. no. Sorry. Who? Congrats, champ. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you very right. much. That's a miss. Feels it good. Also, it just is. like the logo here is cool. You can put that at the front, like the actual championship logo. It's like the little Barca logo in the middle. Is just <laughs> I can't even look yeah. at it. it anyway, is like, champ. it is just three things on top of each other, like a sandwich <laughs> with a random red circle. Is that red? Crazy. I think it's red, right? Yeah, it's a red like, red circle. Oh like, yeah, red square. Square. <laughs> square. 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 Um. Well, it, it, I wanted to talk about it real quick because two guys drove by behind us. We're at live at Greyhawk, literally as the, the the classic is happening, and two guys drove behind us. They didn't even qualify for this thing they won a truly sweepstakes and they're just in this thing no way so it really was like uh i feel like we get a, a bunch of shit sometimes on twitter being like you guys don't actually give away these things like Riggs doesn't actually have people stay at his cottage and frank you don't That's actually cool. play with people at the at the at colonial and whenever we do these sweepstakes like oh you can play in the classic championship for free bro two sets of guys two duos are here today four players are here for free they didn't have to they didn't have to play in the qualifiers none of that and they're just here having the best time of their life their families are out here they had a vacation about it that's awesome and i saw them drive by and they just had the biggest smiles on their face i'm like those guys won by clicking enter in a sweepstakes were they wearing these hats unfortunately they were not did you You know what's cool is there's a lot of families out here i was driving around a lot of a lot of wives a lot of girlfriends a lot of dads they just walk and they follow it's very cool wisconsin group no, there's a whole the last crew. night the, during the Packers game was insane. All two, of Wisconsin was in the bar last night. The two <laughs> women brought all of Wisconsin to yeah. the tournament. Sick. Like, they have 15 and I bet against the Packers last night it was tough being next to them. Like uh, yeah. every first down, it was like go back, go. It was nuts. It was crazy. Did you guys see to bring it back to Tiger a little bit? Did you guys see the what Phil Mickelson what he favorited? I did his, see his that, most yeah. recent like no, on. Oh no. So <laughs> Tiger was looking. Wild he card he, he looks like the Rock right now. Like, he yep. is fucking. He looks a little bit borderline 2020 Bryson. He is He's huge, jacked. super top heavy. So he kind of. There was a lot of talk about that after. You're there done was with a this. tweet about about his head. Looks ridiculous head with a putter. Like some of the clips of him with a putter because he looks so like a twig. <laughs> so the the tweet was like some you know nameless account loft lie whatever the account was and it it was basically saying you know Tiger's hat looks so big like you could scoop ice cream out of it like implying that he is doing steroids basically yeah and phil mickelson liked the tweet that was the most <laughs> recent like on the so tweet. so i was actually gonna ask that like do we i mean is tiger on hgh no i don't think he's on anything that's not allowed i will i think that whatever they get tested? is allowed yeah they get tested i randomly I, after rounds they'll get pulled like after a round and they have to go so piss i got in a huge debate like, I, on, I was I like i was in a huge debate this weekend with a couple of my friends and if they're listening to this they know it i mean it was it was like 14 hours long of going back and forth about Tiger Woods being on steroids. And I was defending, you know, defending the, the cat. And at the end of the day, I was saying at some point, and I fall on this side with all steroids, quote unquote, if you're not getting caught with it and you're, and you're getting tested, whatever you're doing to your body, to me, I don't care about it. Like you're a professional athlete. Like I'm sure the guys in all sports are doing things to their body that we're not. Like they're not getting their... They're not getting their recovery stuff at CVS. They're they have millions of dollars. They're figuring out the best way to improve their bodies. As long as you're not like legitimately, deliberately breaking the rules of that league, I don't see what the issue is, right? Like Alex Rodriguez never failed a test. I've neither always Barry Barnes. Neither did Barry Barnes. I've always found that to be insane to me. Like if he's doing the things and he's figured out a way to make his body at the peak level that it's been without breaking the rules that the league has set, 
Why is that an issue? It does seem like historically in sports with things like this, the steroid manufacturer is not the right word, but they're always like a step ahead of the testers. That was the big Balco thing with baseball and, and uh, Barry Bonds where it was like, these guys who are doing this are always a step ahead of the testers. And I largely agree with you. I, I think, but I guess it's like, what if that would eventually become illegal just because they're behind? Is that justified enough to where they're doing something that just by the rule of the book isn't illegal, but it's clearly giving them an advantage that the other guys don't have. I would say if Tiger Woods is doing steroids, they need to stop testing. I agree. I don't, right. th- I like don't think that, they would publicize a, a, t- a positive test. That's what I'm saying. If that gets you think to they would eat tour it. HQ, I think they would be like, Tiger, you, totally. hurt, you hurt plantar fasciitis is acting up. You're if they're like, Tiger, do you want us to test you? And he's like, no. They're like, okay, Well, no that's problem. sort of the PJ Tour's policy no anyway. They don't really release right. suspensions. Like, DJ At just all. like took a break. Yeah. He just he, sat around and did nothing. to get I mean, his life in order. He's abnormally large for his age. <laughs> and huge. the way that he's gotten this big at this age is almost unnatural, right? I think he's been lifting weights upper body like you like probably more than anyone. There, who's the who's the fight? Is it like Chael Sonnen or whatever yeah. his name is? He like claims to be a like an expert on people that take steroids, and he's just like yeah, like he's just take he's just like taking. He's Chael Sonnen's great. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's like him he's, and LeBron. Oh, he said that recently. Yeah, he's like him and LeBron are just absolutely just like on. It may not have been recently, but <laughs> in that text thread that everyone's just fucking pounding me on um, about Tiger on a HGH. Don't look at me like that. Um, Pounding me on. They were basically saying like every all of his like athletic peers are thinking it as well at this point. Um, <laughs> but uh, like I, I, I fall I, on the side of I don't care. Yeah, that's what I kind of say. It's like, and you know the other thing about steroids is like if I pop the fucking needle in my arm and I don't even know how it happens, pop, pop in your ass, right? Depends on what it is. I but still got to put the work in, don't I? Yes. Right. It's it makes not like you recover putting, faster, so you could put more work in. But you're not like you're not. Filling your arms up with helium no, and all of a that sudden was the, you're that was big. Like you that still was the gotta big. hit the baseball. You that still was gotta the hit the argument too. It's like, bro, you could put me, you could jack me with steroids. I still can't hit a 98 mile power. No, <laughs> like Barry like, Bonds was just gifted enough. He was so gifted where it was like, now we're gonna put steroids in his body and he's gonna hit. <laughs> <seven> <laughs> <five> <laughs> <more> and <laughs> I get like, you know, their their um, the unhealthiness, right? Like steroids. Well, it's that, but it's also it's their opponents and their peers that are not taking it that are like, well, if we're pl- we're facing right. you. And we're doing it by the book, and you're not. That's unfair. Well, that advantage. was like the Tour de France thing too, where it got so bad. They were all doing it. They, that everybody was doing it. It's like if you're not doing it, you're you're going to finish 250. Well, where I think the that's the of... justification for banning it. Is that like True. you can't make it where? Because now you've got high school kids that are 15, 16 trying to get recruited, and they're like, I have to do steroids. Right. It does go. Like, it does roll well, all the way down. Not, the hill. I had a friend in high school who did. They don't test for steroids in high school, and he and he did steroids in high school that's to insane. get big, and oh, he got yeah. a college scholarship. I had football I got, play, I had that's like on my team you know if it was worth if, you know college scholarship to a, a big time school is two hundred some thousand dollars. You know, buddy who did steroids in like our twenties after school, not for athletics. Just for, he's like, I just want to be fucking jacked. So dude. if I just did work? steroids, he, I'd be oh yeah, jacked. he's absolutely jacked. You no, know? you, you gave me fuck. HGH and gave me like six months. <laughs> Am I coming back? Sounds like, like a video that, series, like that SpongeBob <laughs> fucking meme where he dude, walks. You would have to put work in. Frankie goes on the cream and the clear for six months. Does he get better at golf? What are the side effects? Would we pick up the losing sponsorships if you just start acne voice change? It's like going through puberty i think your voice like cracks he's got some of your balls sweat a so lot if i just showed up to the podcast with just hey, a boys. deeper voice and like and your uh, head gets bigger remember barry bond's head got well, really that's big. what yeah. phil was saying that's what phil was saying that tiger's yeah. head was too big or that's what he liked i shouldn't say likes don't necessarily are not endorsements like, if you're like not in a golf video for a couple months and then you re-emerge from, from the winter, acne and, and you're shit. just yoked just really mean <laughs> to your wife pimples and shit just all Hitting over the ball, my like, face. Three, i think you get moody too i think it's like you get angry i'm sure it's a nightmare roid rage right like that was a thing yeah. all these guys like banging I don't their heads that. i don't no, know there's guy no like reason, so. what is lebron he spends like four million dollars a year on his body just like well, that chambers was gonna be my and thing is like and... what's the line of like how, if right. guys want to improve That's their bodies saying, like yeah. at some point you know in that argument i was having they're like they're taking things that we can't get at cvs i'm like every fucking athlete in the world that's making that much money is taking things that you can't even imagine yeah right. they're going in like zero gravity chambers and getting LeBron's their eyes like, like 20 feet underground every night <laughs> even like some guy it's like, crazy like, even a guy like like like, like the hockey guys we know um th- th- that guy dr schmo in minnesota yeah. does like like ridiculous like eye alignment and shit like they're going in these machines and they're like hitting lasers with their eyes so that yeah. their eyes can be faster than other people's eyes like that 
like I can't fucking go do that. It's probably thousands and th- you know what I mean. It's yeah. like it's an it's an insane thing to go do to your eyes because that? you can see the puck faster. Was it VJ who was like uh, injecting deer, deer antler, antler juice spray. into his like neck or something? Deer antler spray. <laughs> that was what, wasn't that what that Ray, was Ray Lewis, Lewis that covered deer, in like deer two days? Spray, <laughs> deer tore his shoulder off the limb yeah. and he was just like, I'm back. Deer antler spray had a had a run there for a little while. Who did? Deer antler, oh, antler spray. spray. It was hot did. in the streets for a second. It there. really Aaron Rodgers. Is coming back like next week from a fucking <laughs> torn Achilles. Like you don't tell me he's on something Football's that we're scarier, not. Scarier though, because now you're talking about like these guys are freight trains. Yeah, and they're even bigger and faster, and they're just gonna break each other's necks if they get start going fast enough. Football's so, a crazy game, dude. It's so scary. The whole concept of it is outrageous. The speed of it is so crazy. Just outrageous jacked people that all they do is get as jacked and strong as fast as possible and then just run into each other as hard as they can. Car crash. Got like 375 pound guys run four five forties. Like, what are we doing? Crazy. And it's like how? the running backs, once they get to 25 or 26, it's like you're washing out again for the 20. Some of those running backs, less, like, less how could anyone stop them? Yeah. They yeah. just come barreling through there. On the whole of the subject... I don't care. I don't care either. And also the guys on one leg. Like if you're going to talk to me about Tiger having an advantage over other people, yeah. you can end the conversation right there. The guy's playing legitimately on one leg. He has no leg. So uh, like, right. I think I'll go on record. I don't think he's doing it. I think he's smart enough to know that like the, the impact it would have on his legacy if he got popped. I don't think he's doing Why? it. Either. He's so big. He's so big. But the he guy, all he does lot. is lift weights. But is that even, is it even possible yeah. to have that? Joe play? Rogan is huge. He's like 56. But he's he also might, getting blasted yeah. with a lot of stuff. Yeah, he, he might. He, does oh, he all loves it. He talks about stuff. it. He's like, I get, I, I, if I can afford it, I'll do it. But Even I'm sure illegal. Tiger's doing that. You can like, afford it. it, pro- it he can afford it. I'm yeah. sure Tiger's doing that. He's getting blasted with a million different things. Well, that was like, yeah, I remember is, Kobe you know? when he, what, he tear his knee one year as Achilles. I don't know if he's and he getting was going to Germany. Somebody getting his blood spun. Like, think about that. Kobe going to Germany and getting his blood spun. Not illegal because he was in Germany. Like, these guys are all doing shit like that. Yeah. Dude, so what is that process? They take your blood out, they infuse like better stuff in it, and they put it back and spin it around so it goes into your bloodstream and then put it back in you. Mm-hmm. I have such, That's what you I just have such a, a shallow robot. understanding of what it is. I just know he got his blood spun. You know, that must do something. <laughs> That's legit. Spun it around really fast and then he makes his knee heal. Dude, faster. it makes me think about how like when I hear like Rogan goes on about how he's in different ice chambers and he's doing that stuff, how just far behind I fall every day. Oh, <laughs> oh dude. Dude, my brothers. When I, when I get out of a hot shower and that cold feeling, I'm like, oh, I basically just took an ice bath. <laughs> just, the, just the cold basically. air in my body. Yep. Yep. Dude, my brother's doing <laughs> That's this how new thing. We are. He like listen to a show or something. He's got this new thing where he makes sure every day in the morning he gets grounded. So like sunlight. Like literally, his his body and feet need to spend a few minutes encountered with the earth because apparently it like realigns your electrical yeah. current. And so he makes sure every day he gets grounded. So he walks outside in his backyard barefoot for like three minutes. It's a big Andrew Huberman <laughs> thing. Incredible. And Andrew Incredible. Huberman is this. Dude, like... his, my sister-in-law sent me an unbelievable video. She was like out for a morning walk on the other side of the block. Yeah. And she could see between the houses, my brother Kyle, just having a coffee barefoot walking around the backyard. She's Who's like, look it at, doesn't work, I guess. She's like, look at your fucking brother's new lunatic routine. He's just like looking at the sun. Yeah, this guy, <laughs> Andrew Huberman, who's like a yeah. Stanford neuroscientist or, you know, something. He says that. Like sunlight in the morning is the most important thing for dopamine and for happiness. Yeah, he's that's like what he's You got to get outside and get real. Sunlight. He also says that like two, even two drinks of alcohol per week is like horrible for your body. So I just feel <laughs> oh, guilty Jesus now every Christ. time that I drink. What about thirty-seven? No, I, yeah, I think. Then you about hear her. about these like old like <laughs> yeah. Asian ladies yeah. that have been drinking like Sephora and right. fucking like they've been taking shots of stuff since they were like eleven and they're one hundred and twelve years old. They always. They always ask of a 120 year old person, yeah. how'd you stay alive this long? And they're like, 10 Dr. Peppers a day. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right. That's what Gary Player said to me when he was like, what's your diet? I went through my diet. And he's like, you're one of these fucking guys that's just going to eat cheeseburgers forever. And then you're going to live forever. Hopefully. Or you're going to die at like 52 from a heart attack. 100%. Either way. 68. Either way, I'm very excited about Tiger Woods. Yeah. Full circle. A lot to be excited about. Full circle. Like, I mean, he's just going to play. I was thinking, like, the U.S. Opens at Piners next year. Like, Tiger Woods going to play in the U.S. Open at Piners. You're going to watch him from your balcony? It's going to, it's just like, uh, we love. Pirates. I mean, the Bahamas is pretty flat. Yeah, very flat, very warm. But he also walked through sand for most of. Yeah, like, I noticed from, that's hard to do. It is hard to do. <laughs> Our bar so low. <laughs> the next guy yeah, walks those goalposts. People are talking about. <laughs> the, See him walk through that sand. The next possibility. Is, he says he is, does beach walks at home. So yeah. I mean, that's apparently he's like very healthy for you. He's getting grounded. People run on the beach. You ever try to run on a beach? Oh, oh possible. God, I can run. You're going nowhere. It's so hard. So is that good for you in a physical sense? Because you use all kinds of different muscles to stabilize. Like stabilizing muscles. Yeah, you get sores hell if you run on the beach you you I run on like the soft side right not yeah. by like the water yeah by the water as soft is, as it yeah. can get yeah. sidewalk you see like Dwayne Wade and them will run up huge sand yeah. dunes and shit sand dunes. Oh. 
That's what I'm talking about falling behind. We're not doing any of that shit. Yeah. That feeling though, like of doing, I haven't had it in so long, but of doing like a workout that you really push yourself. The way you feel afterwards is just we don't Amazing. have that feeling. Like you can like lives. breathe and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I feel it's like, like naturally high. Now I'm just like you. I feel claustrophobic all the time. Everything's closing in on me. <laughs> yeah, you need to get grounded. <laughs> yeah, what I do. Get grounded. Get a little sunlight. Classic mm. champ. That's me. <laughs> classic champ. I want it. That guy is a classic <laughs> champ. Classic. Two hundred of these out in the wild. Yeah, you're just a classic <laughs> champion. Classic champ. Thank you. It's also one of those hats that like if Dave sees in like in in person like if dave's walk if dave, dave porter is walking down the street and someone's yeah. wearing that he's gonna be like what's that hat like yeah. that's gonna catch his eye about how bad that is yep he's like what is that i'm hoping there's not an email chain i'm on where i was like yep go with that one <laughs> <laughs> i don't think sure. there, is, there cannot be what, the, what are the odds what are the, the odds favorite trail is it possible bad. i think it's 10 percent. okay but it, I, i'm thinking either i just maybe didn't i don't know i don't know we the make really is, good merch and we've we've come we've we've really like reached a new bar when it comes to quality that's that's a setback for the whole brand <laughs> the thing is though we, if we talk enough shit about it it's going to become like a cool vintage oh 100 yeah. that's what we're yeah. trying to like do. i'm taking this home now and i'm gonna wear it's it it's the worst that we've ever put out and that means something it does mean something yeah. there's the best and there's the worst yeah it's like all of it's worthy my, my uh t-shirt i have that says bart stool sports on it yeah yep i remember the vintage that ones we printed like a couple hundred of them before we realized it Hey boys, yeah, this guy's guys listening to team. Genuine. Yep. Mm-hmm. Pony. That guy's got an absolute log it. in his lip. Art wow. Stool Sports. All right. Right. It's like when they when they print cards wrong. Baseball cards. Yeah. They have a little typos Sick. in them. Those are worth like $10,000. <laughs> you're feeling overheated you're feeling dehydrated which we all get there all the time whether it's because you're drinking or you're just outside or you're working out or whatever it might be dehydration is brutal we've all been there it stinks biolite biolite is going to get you rehydrated it's iv in a bottle you have one biolite it's the same amount of electrolytes as six and a half sports drinks Biolite's a huge part of the barstool classic here they've been a big sponsor for years um this stuff i would say is life-changing when you need it you get biolite it's massive a lot of guys out here today drinking biolite they were at the barstool scottsdale bar last night yep uh, for the party we had for them, and then you one know, guy got home at four thirty a.m. Oh my goodness! <laughs> tee off was at what eight, yeah, eight this morning? First tee time was at yeah. Eight. He had a bio letter. What party wrap up? Nine. <laughs> so he had an adventure. <laughs> yeah, he it was nine. Adventure. Adventure. Yeah, six to uh, nine, I think. Yeah, so I'm guessing that guy has had a few bottles of biolite today. Yeah, it's you become a it. staple when you walk into the Barstool Classic. You know to to go grab that biolite. I know I do every single Barstool yeah. Classic. In that morning, I have one biolite, and it just kind of resets my whole entire body. Like I was. I woke up this morning and had some dark urine, and mm. I was just mm-hmm. pretty dehydrated. Probably a lot of long travel remember, day. You remember Nashville? Yeah. You went out with Big Rob yeah, in Nashville. I do. Showed up and drank two biolites, and you're like, I feel great. Dude, yeah, that's Nashville always wins. I talk, I just talked about that <laughs> last night with someone at Barcelona Scott. So they're like, dude, you look like death in Nashville. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Big Rob took me out for one old fashioned, and I was dancing naked on the on the, on the the stage like three hours later at Kid Rocks. Um, but Nashville will do that to you. But yeah, biolite, man. I, this morning, I really, really needed it. I feel it in the back of my throat like it's dry. Yeah, yeah you do. Oh, my God. Empty holes. Biolite, when water is not enough for a limited time, use code MELON, M E L O N, to get 15% off your next order of Biolite at drinkbiolite.com. That is code MELON. We're getting into the uh, little nitty gritty. We got to talk about your boy, Matthew Fitzpatrick. Snitch Patrick, is that what they're calling him? I, I missed this. I, I saw Fitzratrick. <laughs> yeah, so basically what happened, <laughs> Fitzratrick, I think is better. <laughs> so basically what happened was he was playing with Colin Morton. This is a crazy rule. When you explained this to me earlier, yeah. I had no idea this is a rule. So they changed the, the rules with the green reading books. So before this year, everyone used to have a book that just said the percentage of slope on every green. Okay. Which I always hated. So, I thought it was very stupid. So like if you're an aim point guy and you know you didn't have to judge, you could just see on your book, okay, this is a 2% break. You're, they they ban those books. So the books that they have now don't have the don't have the number listed on it. They still have like slope, but they don't have the number listed on it. You are not permitted to go into the old book and then transfer the new information over to the new book. Okay. You also can't take a level, measure it, and then write it down in your book. It gets to be a problem when you write it down like during a practice round. If, if you right, if you remember it, I think you're okay. You just can't write it down in the book. So. Which is very nebulous because it's like, how do you outlaw books that already exist? You know, the, the green reading books is the same golf course. They like they can go see it and just memorize it, but they can't write it down. Anyway, interesting. So he's playing with Colin on Saturday and Colin on the fourth hole has a putt and he says to his caddy, what's the break here? The caddy looks in the book and says the number. Matt doesn't say anything the rest of the round, which is 
maybe where he, you know, aired a little bit. And uh, after the round, he, he, he said he said this after his round. He said, I've wanted to do that in the past. I've wanted to write down the numbers. Nobody writes down more stuff than Fitzpatrick. Right. He's like, hey, this guy is looking for any little advantage that he can get. So he's thinking, I've wanted to do this in the past, and I was told you can't do this. So then I saw Colin do it, and I thought, oh, maybe I got some bad information. So he went to the rules official, and he said, I heard Colin doing this. Or I, are we allowed to do this, basically, because I thought we weren't. But and the rules official said, well, now that you're asking me, I have to ask you, like, what, what happened? Like, what's, what's the question? He said, oh, Colin asked his caddy on the fourth hole. His caddy gave him the number. So they penalized Colin two strokes oh. after the round. And Matt's the one who pointed it out. I don't think that he meant to, like, snitch. I think it came from a place of I want to do this, and if he's doing it, then I should be able to do it. The issue is with the rules themselves being so like nebulous and stupid. And also, Colin said that he was told before that it is okay, and then now he was told it wasn't what okay. What did his penalty end up being? Two shots. So I mean, Matt's getting look. Matt's an easy target. Like he's he's clearly on, you know on the nerdy side. He writes everything down and going after class to the teacher and, and saying oh well i noticed he was doing this are we allowed to do this and then the kid gets penalized like i get it oh, yeah i just think he i think he it's didn't dork move I, so that's right what that's i could also see in. him playing yeah, it out in his head where it's like i'm pretty sure that's illegal but if i ask it in a way maybe i can i won't be judged for what i'm doing yeah it's like how could he have handled it better just not said anything no he probably did the right thing it's just it's just he's kind of a dorky guy with a dorky move yeah. <laughs> you know? he's getting roasted online I, yeah. I actually spoke to him last night and he had no idea he just had no idea that he was getting roasted online. oh wow. imagine that imagine living That's, in that world what a life i, I was like I, I messaged him and i was like the internet is full of very dumb playing. people i go the internet is full we of really play. stupid people and he goes what do you mean and i said oh the penalty he goes oh yeah but i bet if it was patrick reed or whatever and i was like no 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 like they're mad at you he was like oh that sucks that's probably the right way to live. Yeah, it's got to be the right way to nice live. It nice to just be completely, completely, you know, not even have any idea that people are talking about you online. How outrageous is that you can memorize it, but you can't write it down? Yeah. Right. So that was going to be my question. What's to say, so Colin asks his caddy. Yeah. And then his caddy gives him a number. What's to say his caddy isn't a beautiful mind and just has all the numbers for that green on in his head? Because I think Matt saw him like look down, look at the number and like and say it. And that's where you cross the line. It's 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 a bad situation. See that part of it's a little deeper, snitchy. Yeah, just in my like. He was watching their whole operation. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Right. He eyes off this book. Yeah. Right, right. I think it, it plays. Why even take that book out there? No, like, like, the, the, the book Matt, it's, like yeah, just like pay have. attention to your problem. own game. If I'm Colin, it's like fuck off. Like I know that it's a game of honor. Like if you don't think I'm honoring the game, you know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, because I'm thinking like the way to me handle it better would have been for Fitz to just kind of be like. Oh, he just must have memorized that or whatever. Not like, not like get in the weeds about it. Yeah. When he's in his head, he was so deep into what they were doing. Also, that he was like, guys are writing these numbers like somewhere on that, like next to a yard is just oh, write another two or whatever. Definitely not it's just the like, only person who's like, done it. Oh, like this yard is two, three, two. And there's a little two next to it. Oh, and you cross it out. It's like, oh, this green. I'm just thinking about yeah. how I would cheat it. Yeah. Like, I think it just, just, I think it just goes so back easy. To it's like, there's a million numbers on there. One <laughs> of them can just be dedicated to the fucking slope. You can come up with a whole new system. I think there's a thousand numbers on that sheet. I got to pee. Make one of the numbers somewhere on that sheet every time. Bottom left corner is a slope. And he's like, oh, it's like two. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, come on. What are we talking about? The guy still, has, similar to the Tiger Woods, the guy still has to make the putt. Yeah. He but does. I think they it goes back to Matt just slope. not giving a single fuck about being liked by anybody. And in his mind, it's like, well, if this guy's going to do it, then I should be able to do it. And the only thing that he cares about is getting better at golf. Yeah. And so if, if, if he feels like Colin Morikawa is not going to like him now, he's like, no, no, no. Don't is care. What it is. Don't care. I just don't care, really. I don't know. I'm trying to think of how much I wonder if Colin this. cares about it. I'm sure he's not happy about it. I mean, you, you know, he didn't say anything. He could have said something during the round like, hey, maybe you should, you know, that's what he, I think he probably could have done. Is gone if you're his boy, be like, listen, I just, like, I heard you do this. Just stop doing it. Yeah, exactly. Or, be like, or you should go check and make sure that's okay. To go straight to the rules official, you then you then kind of put the rules official in a, in a tough spot. It's tough. Yeah, it is. But I don't know. I, I don't think people are going to care about it. In, golf in just generates these weird situations where guys have to be very dorky and, like, bitchy where you have to, like, call someone out on a rule because it is. You enforce your own rules half the time. So when someone doesn't do it, it makes you look like I a little bitch when I'm you don't. I Fitzpatrick, I would that's have, the, the nature of the sport. I would have asked Colin. Yeah. I would have been like, can we do that? Yeah. And if you would have been like, I don't know, then I'm just like, all right, yeah, we don't that's, know. That would have been the move. would have been, like, go up to him and say, hey, I noticed, like, did they tell you you can do that? And he says yes, and then. But then what happens if he says yes? And then you would Fitz should be like, oh, you should go make sure and check. And then Colin would penalize himself. That would probably be the better. 
the yeah, better outcome. Give, leave it in Colin's hands, I guess would be my thing. I, I don't, don't think Colin did it for any sort of advantage. Like, I don't think he did it on purpose. No. In the way I was Sounds kind of, like even the players have a lack of understanding about what's the rule. The problem is the rule. The problem is the rule is really is hard to enforce and is like, you know, very unclear and, and there's a gray area. And I think what Colin said, he's like, there shouldn't be a gray area in the rules. It should be. We had a clear. little green situation, uh, green reading situation today on the 10th tee here at the Barstool Classic what Championship. Happened? Well, someone came up to me and was like, hey, I have this app that shows me like the green slopes. And it's the same thing that's on the um golf carts but i like to have it on my phone so i can bring it up to the green with me is that allowed and i stared at him i said i have no idea <laughs> so how, then how did you rule they like got on a walkie-talkie multiple walkie-talkies brought out Sick. and uh conversations were had and he was told yes yeah that he could yeah it's the same software the as the stuff that's on yeah. the cart it do- you can't zoom in so it just shows you like a heat map of yeah. like where the runoffs are. And he's like, I just, he goes, I think it's crazy. People don't like download this. And it's just on there on the green with them. Also had the putter thing. Yeah. We had a little putter incident. This is the second time this happened. Actually, somebody claimed that their putter broke while they were knocking sand off their shoe. I could see that happening. But who though. does yeah. that with the putter? They uh, usually do it with the wedge. Do it with the wedge. Do it with the wedge. But like, if you notice, like after you pick up your putter, if you notice, like at the end, like maybe you look back, you have a couple feet trail marks you just like you hit it a little bit i've done right. that before yeah oh, you yeah. have to break your putter i'm just i'm a little i'm a little skeptical that that can look a lot like i was really mad that i missed but the cheating's putt. cheating so yeah. like if he's just li- you know what i'm saying right if he wanted lying. to just cheat he could yeah so that's always tricky to me like why would you barely cheat you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Go if you're for gonna it. cheat just fucking cheat you're gonna cheat do it that's what i'm saying but like a pro on long island so we got yeah oh, right that guy exactly. Jeez. exactly that's what i'm saying if you're gonna <laughs> cheat fucking cheat. drop the fucking ball yeah who gives a shit like that group that came in with like a 42 and that scramble yeah. remember that they're all getting booed, booed. <laughs> loudly booed <laughs> um that guy's like blacklisted on long island yeah, dude, <laughs> wait cheated. what's that story it's there's wild. a there's a pro on long island your that coach was, no, I went to him once. Frank, he coach. only associates with controversial people. Yeah. What? Have you guys talked about this already? Yeah, but I'm not saying know. the name or anything. Okay, um, Google it. Golf pro cheater. Is this Long the Island. one guy? You got the guy you went to one time? I went to him one time. That was like the recent one. Long time swing coach, uh, Frankie. Like Bro. a year and a half ago. Yeah, like his garage thing. Oh yeah, it's like, here's what you do, Frankie. Yeah. You, keep you may two have taken like your a high caliber. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. you get to this position yeah. at the top, drop the ball out of your That's pocket. Right. Well, this is all like. Um, when was this? <laughs> Sorry, this was you guys like, already talked about it. Obviously, it's like a year and a half, maybe a year ago. No, I don't know if we've like told I don't the story. Know if we did it on the show. And another pro that we all know was the one that called him out. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Whoa, I yeah. missed this completely. They were playing in some like event, and um, the ball. W- I, we talked about this on the show. I don't know. I can't remember. I don't know if we did on the show. Oh, shit. I think we did. Oh, we did? I think I remember. We don't have to talk about it. You seem nervous to talk about it. Well, I I just don't know. I mean, I really don't care. You know what I mean? About this. I mean, it seems like the guy's doing well, but. um, John Doe. Yeah. I guess he was just like. Is that what they say? They're playing in a tournament. And like when you're playing in these events, um, it's all like for fun at some point. Like like it's not. They're just playing in like a a local tournament pro tournament. local pro tournament and it's like there's really not that much on the line there it's like not that crazy so the fact that this happened was pretty nuts like the guy was pulling balls like out like they were watching him just like he would have a ball like up in the up in the lip and you just like pull it out and put it to the bottom of the bunker (laughs) and then like one time like he he hit a like a tailor made two into the bushes and then a tailor made four went onto the green and it happened like over and over to the point where like they almost like threw hands like yeah like they were like this is like a slap in the face to everyone that's playing in this thing. Like it's nuts. Like it was like four or five times within three holes. It was chaos. Like 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 a serial <laughs> puller outer of balls. See, this is what I'm talking about. I can't gonna... wait to find out who the pro that we know is. Yeah. And I guess they like kind of got into it at the end where like this is fucking bullshit. And uh yeah, I mean <laughs> was, was this like, widely reported? Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Say... I'm gonna look it up. Was it like a Monday Q picked it up or something? Because Monday Q Sounds I know that right. he I don't know if it was a different one, but remember the he, Monday Q was doing a whole deal about a guy in a, I think a similar style tournament, who legit was just <laughs> on every hole. He would go over a hill where they they're like he hit it into the shit right. We'd get up there and he'd have like a nine iron in barely from the rough and hit it on the green and be like yeah putt for birdie and they'd just be like I mean you hit it out of into the like, what do you mean it's amazing that's amazing yeah. it does feel like I, I was wondering if it was reported because it's not I, who's on that beat. Money I, Q. I don't, he's like the only one, I think. But it wasn't it's like, like, yeah, I don't know what. It was like a local Met pro event. I don't really know. <laughs> they take that very seriously, though. You're playing against other guys in they your do. field, your peers, and all that. So. You represent your club, too. You represent your like club. club bros. True. Yep. 
Um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Wow. So the putter incident <laughs> we had today, the guy claims that he was knocking sand off his shoe. Putter broke while he was doing that, which I believe the rule, I didn't like look it up, but I just believe that the rule is if your putter breaks norm dur- or any club breaks during the normal like course of play, whatever that means, it's up for interpretation, you can replace it, but you have to replace it with the exact same club, like yeah. same specs, same everything. Barso Classic Championship, we had a cart going by. We were just like, you can just replace the putter. Yeah. If, as long as you didn't break it, go get a putter from the pro, pro shop. We have a bunch of Spider X's up here that we allow people to like look at. So just, if just you, I don't think you're getting an advantage by using a putter that's like brand new that you've never used before. No, and no, I would, I would it's agree a putter. With that. So I was just like, yeah, just use it for a putter. I don't really care. Hmm. So that was kind of where we ruled. But yeah, you know, a couple rulings. It'd be tough to play the whole day. Like you, you come out here, it's a whole event. You break your putter regardless of how it happens. Like you just like get a new putter. You know yeah, what I mean? It's, it's like, like I got to with a hybrid now. I mean, come on. Right <laughs> We're fucking. Yeah, maybe plus... you give him a putter, but you give him the opposite hand putter. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a hand. Right, you got a plus a six here. out here today. Is yeah, that I heard like plus six and a half or something. Dude, I was hanging on a, on a par three for a long time. There's some good players out there here. That's the thing I was gonna say at the top. Is um. There's a lot of golf tournaments out there, a lot of golf outings. Every single Monday at every single co- country club is a golf outing. We have we didn't invent the golf outing for sure. We didn't inv- invent golf tournaments. What we, what we have somehow come up with is a tournament of our own that people care deeply about to try and win. And this is the fifth year that we've done it. And you watch these guys on the driving range of the Barcelona Classic Championship. We're taking the best players from, was it 25 different cities? Yep. 25 different cities. You're taking the best four groups of duos essentially and you're bringing them all to one location and all these guys think that they can win and that's like 200 yeah. golfers that are on the driving range on the putting green and they, it's a simulation they're entering into they're like they're playing a legitimate professional golf tournament in their in their eyes and yeah the biggest thing they'll play in they had a lot of fun in the qualifier they're drinking trulies they're ha- you know they're, they're playing music and then here it's like it's what we talk about with Barcelona. You get to like step into this arena that you can't even yeah. imagine you were ever going to be in again. Maybe like high school was the last time you had people watching you hit a important shot in basketball or a golf shot in a tournament or whatever. And now they get to do this again. This one guy has his whole family out here and he's like, dude, I got three kids. I play. I used to play in a bunch of tournaments growing up. Haven't played in one in like 20 years or 15 years. He's like, this is the only thing I've been thinking about for like uh, like nine months. Sick. So and cool. he's like, I've been prepping <laughs> for it. We made a vacation out of it. My kids are here. My wife is here. He's like, you understand how much this means to me? He's like, yeah. It's, he's like, yeah, it's like a dumb thing that you guys came up with, but like, I'm gonna win the Barstool Classic Championship. That's I'm gonna be a classic champ, like it says it on Trent's like hat. Trent Ryan. And uh, that was really cool. Like it's, it's a, a it's a cool champ. thing to to be able to like we're, we. We're a joke of a brand at times, but then also like this is people's most important day of their year. Yeah. And that's really cool that we have that kind of like mix. It's really the closest thing that you can get the rest of your life to a big game that you had playing youth or high school or college sports. Yeah. Because we all had that to some level where you're playing baseball or hockey or football or whatever it was like you had that your whole life when you're six years old on whenever you start playing that sport until you kind of graduate from high school or college, wherever you level you play, you always have a next game. Yeah. That game means the world. You're practicing with your team. Your parents come and show up. Like your school, once you get to high school or whatever, you have like legitimate fans out there. And the game means it's the biggest thing that could possibly matter. It's everything. And then once you graduate, you just never have it ever again. And that's crazy. And this is the closest thing I think a lot of people get to that. Yeah, I, I remember after my last soccer game in uh, in high school, I cried like a baby. Because yeah, oh, I, I cried a lot after was, my It was like done. Game. It was like, yeah. I just don't know when I'm ever going to have like, like playing, unironically playing a pump up song. Before right. like yeah. a, before a sporting event, oh, yeah. that's just that hasn't happened in ten years. I don't even remember my last baseball game I played. I think we were just in the playoffs of high school baseball, and it just hit, like you didn't even think that it was going to end. And yeah. then like they hit a walk off home run, and you're just like, "Holy oh, shit, it's over!" Yeah. Like I guess <laughs> the fuck. You know, over. I didn't have any like feelings. I didn't have any like butterflies in my stomach of being like because I always think about when a player is like about to play his last game, like Derek Jeter. I was sick to my stomach watching him play his last game because i'm just thinking about what's going on in his head being like the best part of my life is over and i'm like experiencing that right now i always get like sick like thinking about it in my yeah, head yeah like literally nauseous being yeah. like this guy's thinking about like fucking our guy cal clutterbuck just played his 1000th game i was and he was skating around they're all like celebrating him and he's probably thinking like at some point this is gonna like i'm not gonna be in that locker room anymore and i'm not gonna be out here playing a game for a living yeah i played a thousand in the nhl maybe i play 1200 who like you don't know what the number is but like you're coming you're, you're not on the other you're side not game one right and it makes me picking up paper towels yeah at fucking home depot right? like, that's, <laughs> yeah. what, that's what i got just it like that's <laughs> it's just a cycle of life the circle <laughs> of life but uh yeah and and we kind of 
we kind of just create like um, our own version of a pro tournament and we have crazy signage out here we've got digital boards showing the leaderboard and your name is up there and and guys just care a lot we've got things floating in the water that say barstool classic championship it's you know it's like playing in a pro-am but like it's actually you you're yeah. the pro a it's sneaky cool part is the roped off practice areas roped really off cool practice light. areas the ropes i noticed that this morning this is my i it wasn't last year i was at the hero it was the same week yeah i walked by was that where you got tigered no that was two years that ago. was two years ago where i where i forgot what my name was tiger froze your brain froze my brain talking mm -hmm. about his leg being amputated you hopped on the podcast after which was nice. I shout did. Out, so he's always really nice i guess at the hero because shout out to dylan to chair your arch nemesis in the in your field, I feel like. Are you guys arch nemesis? Arch nemesis. Dylan, and I, Dylan and I are actually good pals. I know you are, but uh, that's, it's a rivalry, right? I do right? things a little differently now. I'm going to stuff into a little bit of a different world. Okay. You guys are Arnie and Jack, you know? He got a really good Tiger shout out. Did you guys see that the first day? I saw him that's say good question, good question Dylan. Dylan. He goes, that's a good question, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> that's I didn't nuts. see that. That's great. That's yeah. a great question, Dylan. <laughs>audio experience I've ever had in my entire life. They have the in-ear ones that Riggs has. And for me, I have the over-ear, just the big headphones that I don't even know what you call them. Like, I don't wrap know. Wraparounds? Just wraparounds? Whatever. They're just headphones. Over-ear over headphones. headphones. And I'm on, I'm on the, uh, <laughs> I'm on a flight. I'm on a flight. <laughs> I'm on a flight yesterday. <laughs> the reach around? I'm on a flight yesterday and Delta has Techniques the capability so of, good. That's, you know, Delta has the capability of um, pairing your Bluetooth headphones now to the screen. And I watched Mission Impossible and I had my techniques with me. And it, it completely put the entire airport just out of my, I was going to say field of vision, but field of listening. And it was just me and this Mission Impossible movie, me and Tom Hanks. Nope, me and um, Tom, Cruise. Tom Cruise. Me and Tom Cruise. And I'm telling you guys, the HD listening experience of watching a movie on a plane on a plane, bullets are whizzing by my head. I'm ducking. He's driving cars out of the Coliseum, and I'm moving around. It was an amazing movie experience. I'm not even kidding, and it was all because of these techniques. They are so good. I couldn't even believe it. And the way that they held the charge, I still had like 92% charge after a four-hour flight. I legit couldn't even get in there because I came in here. No, that's the amazing. Canceled. Right, you got them in right I now. just, yeah, it was what? one of the best flight experiences I've ever had in my life, <laughs> being able to watch a movie like that. Bluetooth, no wire. HD bass rumbling in my ears. It was awesome. It was really, really cool. These things are awesome. Yep. They are honestly awesome. Um, techniques, no ear fatigue either, which is huge advanced fit ergonomics, as they call it. So you can wear these earbuds securely and comfortably if you have the earbuds or if you have the old uh, reach arounds, which are reach arounds. Mm. Which are different. I have those as well. And comfortably over long stretches of time, whether all day at the office or for 18 holes, look at Bushman. Shop for Techniques, True Wireless, AZ80 earbuds at techniques.com. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-C-S dot com, techniques.com. Talking about high school sports quickly, I was with my mom yesterday and I showed her the picture of you in high school oh, when you were God. 14 years old. I don't think I've ever seen her laugh that hard. <laughs> she was I mean, those laughing fucking jerseys. so hard. You look, I, I had so many thoughts when I saw it and so did a lot of people, I'm sure. The comments were hilarious. It's you just, well, first of all, you look like Rory a little bit. Yeah. You look yeah. like Victor Hovland a little bit. <laughs> Victor Hovland you I look. Saw. Could be a women's golf picture. Yeah, yeah. Yes, um, definitely. You have you have like a striking eyebrows. You're yeah. swimming in both shirts that you're wearing. <laughs> yeah, it's it holding was, a TaylorMade R7 quad. Yes. How good is it? I wanted to give TaylorMade. I wanted to give you credit for posting it. And you kind of alluded to it in the tweet caption, but you're like, I found this. I didn't really want to put it up. <laughs> I have to. But we're in the content game, so yeah. I'm gonna put it up. What a picture. I'll never be afraid of posting those types of pictures. Like, I've posted the fat picture of myself from New Year's Eve two years ago, which was startling. That's a stunning um, picture. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like, if I find it funny, I think other people are going to find yep. it funny, and I'm just going to tweet it out. I was at Borelli's with my buddy Andrew, and we were just looking through photos of, of like something. I was looking for a photo to show him, and that it popped up. And I go, what is this? <laughs> I don't even remember taking it or saving it. 
Um, East Metal Jets, baby. Shout out. That I was need like that visor. Visor 14 guy years in that old. Picture. Yeah. Where yeah. is that visor? Isn't it crazy to think that that visor is somewhere? That, uh, that visor might be in my parents' shed along with my East Metal golf bag. My dad still has my bag. It says East Metal Jets on it, which That's I cool. think I might want to like bring back into into use you have rotation. To. That's sick sick blue and yellow bag it says the jets across it that is cool it is cool man i got a lot of responses being like you've been playing golf since you were 14 you suck this much it's like dude or you it's been fucking you also, also suck also yeah, yeah it's been sucks. fucking 16 years which is insane to say like i was i've that was that was 16 years ago yeah, for me. That that's a long fucking time but you're better now than you were then. Yeah, I am. But better like, now. you know, fucking yeah. golf is hard, dude. dude. <laughs> it's so fucking. The difference it, is, is if I put that picture up, and I, my high school golf picture, people would be like, "There's something wrong with this guy. He's still this <laughs> I have bad." Deja vu. Have we ever had this conversation before? No. I have crazy deja vu right now. And um, I think I've said that on the show. I hate when vu. people say that, like, "Oh, Fuck, you guys play pra- How could you possibly not be way better?" Because, like, I think about this: Justin Thomas isn't better than he was in 2017. Golf is not a linear. He sport. plays all no, the time. It's not. He practices all well, the time. He's way worse than he was. In I say this during like a, a yeah. hole like, in one. He was the best player in the world. Then. Golf is so different. Where it's like. You do a hole in one challenge. I do it on the video game, and yeah. everyone's like, "Oh, that one was good. You're getting close." Yeah. Each shot resets, dude. <laughs> They're yes. all in a vacuum. No, nothing is getting close. My one good round yesterday means nothing about the round today. There is no, there is no getting close. Yeah, your mechanics get better for sure. Yeah, you're, like, you're in a rhythm, whatever. But like from year one to year fifteen, things could change dramatically one way or the other i could get worse i could have gotten way worse easily it's it's just the way that it works yeah i got, that, I got that, worse it's that hard, response it's, doesn't make sense to me i got worse no. this year it doesn't make any sense i've got uh, access to better equipment you know I'm, I'm getting better now that i've moved but i had a terrible golf year and there's no explanation for it, it right i think like by by the linear part that people <laughs> comment all the time like every golfer in the world i guess at like 34 would be unbelievable yeah, yeah they'd, be the best ever. Ever. Yeah. they'd be so sick it's like dude they've been practicing for 12 years on tour how right. are they not the best player ever it's like no dude he's like older and shittier and you get yeah. bad habits and like whatever it's weird that it doesn't go that way almost everything else goes that way yeah like if you do something for a long time you generally get better i actually it. Have, yeah. I, I, if you play uh, the piano for 12 years you're better at the end than you were at the beginning i actually talked about this with uh, i got a haircut and my barber was saying he used to play golf and he stopped because he was spending all this money and all this time and he was getting worse yeah, yeah. and so it's like well if I'm going to take all this time away from my family and spend all this money and I'm getting worse. Imagine that happened for like surgeons. You'd have like 19 yeah, right. year old surgeons. It's really the old, one of the only things that way. The human experience largely is like if you want to get better at something, do it more and do it consistently. For whatever reason, golf does not fall in that category. It's such a hard sport that like the slightest thing so that hard. goes wrong in the swing could set you back for a long time. Yeah. It's not, um, it's not a sport like baseball or football where you can get by – by like not having the right um, mechanics and stuff, right? Like, like you can just be athletic and just, hungry, and like, like things yeah. could just happen. You know? Like you can yep. have a good game by just like blocking, and maybe a ball bounces to you. Or in baseball, like you walk a couple times, you steal a base. Like you had a good game. You're a good baseball player. In golf, if you don't have it, you don't have it. Nope, it's gone. Dude, we had plenty of guys playing hockey that were the least skilled guys, but they'd be insanely effective because they were lunatics. You they just would try skate hard, so hard, yeah, and right. train. I try hard just at golf like, all the time. Just dr- run into people and skate really hard and hustle, and like they just end up being pretty good. You like, can end up trying too hard. <laughs> also, you're like, 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 you're like you can the play club sixty like minutes. You could play a sixty minute game, and like you, you were on the ice for thirteen minutes, and you maybe had a secondary assist, and you poke checked one, and a nice, uh, you you read a pass, and maybe you 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 deflected a pass on a power on a penalty kill, and then everyone's like, great game. And like yeah. maybe you just didn't have your best game. You didn't have it in golf. If you don't have your best stuff, you're right. legitimately laughed at. You're right. la- you're, you're a laughing stock. Even you if you have to get through it, you're alone. You have you to, have to continue. Like when you step up to a tee, they're like, no, you have to play this whole like. Yeah, there's nothing right. comparable to it. It's just like bowling. I don't know. <laughs> right. Well, it's an interesting c- comparison with hockey, though, because it's like it's not like in golf if you make a couple birdies, but then you make like four triples. And it's like, oh, good around. You had a couple right. birdies out there. It's like, what'd you shoot? <laughs> no, right. <it> numbers. <laughs> and there were so many times playing hockey where like you'd show up and you felt amazing. And then the puck is just going the exact opposite direction. You're like minus three, no points. Yeah. And you're like, what is going on? And then the other nights, you feel horrible. You got no legs. You feel like trying like, you get two assists, a goal, and you're like, I don't know. I just like, yeah, it was a miracle. It just happened. It was just yeah. around, and it happened. Where golf's hard. Like you're saying, dude, you step just on that by tee yourself. Like, That's the hardest part. You're you by yourself. Do it. By yourself. You have to do it over and over again. You're a quarterback. You have a guy catching the ball. Like, you always have something else. Golf is just you, man. If you don't have it, you don't have it. And so, yeah, I've been playing since I was 14, and I just don't, I don't have it all the time. <laughs> I don't know. But you're as good as you've ever been. Right now, yeah. It was a weird time for people to say that to me because this is the best Agreed. golf I've ever played. They, yeah, uh, they're just doesn't... like they have just those canned responses. They're like, yeah. these guys play golf a lot. I think they suck. You suck. also when you're playing at a younger age, like you have <laughs> you way suck. less. Um, like you're just like you're, 
easier sculpted in golf. I feel like, Big like time. I had no hitches in my swing. Yeah. I was just like, whatever my golf coach at the time for high school shot coach Reynolds, I just like did it. And it was like easier. The game was easier. It felt like I also, I think about that a lot when people chirp me for being worse. And I'm like, dude, I was 29 when we started doing four play. Yeah. I'm 36. Of course I'm worse. Yeah. I'm slower, weaker. <laughs> I'm pathetic. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? Right. We are I reaching the age now where it, you're going way the other way. <laughs> yeah. I feel it every morning. Every, right. Every month I'm like 20% worse. Than I was the previous. I notice month. it by really looking, forward to my, really looking forward to my thirties. I notice. Well, you are. I was just gonna say. I, I notice it by work. how much I have to stretch now. Yeah, Ooh. way more stretching. I didn't start stretching until like two months ago. Stretching didn't even exist in my twenties. I could wake up and I could do anything. I was Superman. No problem. You're now person. I wake up and I'm like, gravity is fucking me up today. Think about how short you're gonna hit it in Gravity. 2030 when they with the lo, with the rollback Work, balls. Yeah. Oh yeah, the can rollback. You, can you explain the rollback thing to yeah. me? Yeah, there's a lot of parts to it. Explain it for the viewers like we're five and we don't understand. Yeah, explain it to the audience because they don't know and it's also me. <laughs> so the way the way that uh, in case they don't get it, the way my it. my uh, old friends at GD explained it is Bill Dyer. Um, Dyer's open. Champ. <laughs> open. See, got hats like this at the Golf Dyer's Championship. Dude. Don't Their hats so. are ten times better than that at the Golf <laughs> Digest Open. They got to be. So, so the way they explained it is goddamn chance. <laughs> as of right now, the you know they, they test these golf balls on like an Iron Byron, basically like a machine that hits balls what perfectly. Was that? Iron, Iron Byron. Byron. You is that that, that robot? robot? Yeah, Morris, yeah. Morris. And uh, they tested at 120 miles an hour club head speed, and the ball at 120 mile an hour club head speed cannot carry or I don't know if it's carry or roll, but 317 yards is the max. Okay. They're going to increase. The speed at which it's tested to 125, the ball still can't go more than 317 yards. Okay. So they're not entirely sure how much impact it's going to have because the ball hasn't been built yet. And there's probably two different directions they can go, right? You can go like more spinny to get it that way, or you could go, I imagine, like just harder and it won't fly as much, but it'll like knuckle. I think they're going to have to do the second one because I think the the test is still going to hit like perfect launch conditions. I think with perfect launch conditions, it has to go... Like just a little bit shorter, and this is on the manufacturers to figure this out. It's on the manufacturers to figure this out, and this is this is what Rory That's was kind crazy. of saying was that when they initially announced it, like a year ago, maybe a little bit less, it was uh, we're only going to do it for the pros. It's only going to be a model local rule where there's going to be basically a pro ball, kind of similar to baseball, where at every level you play with metal bats, and then on the in Major League Baseball you play with wooden bats. There was also big... baseball has a different ball for the pros. Different levels do yes. Okay. But high school has the seams that are higher, and then baseball the seams are essentially inside the baseball, so you can't grip them. Okay, really? that's interesting. Yeah, no. so as a pitcher, it's harder. There was a massive Laces backlash out, from the equipment companies, basically saying, "Well, yeah, you know, a, a huge part of our marketing pitch is you can play the same ball, the same driver as Rory or Scotty." And as we were talking about this earlier today, it's not the exact same thing. They're Specs are all tailored exactly to where they want, and the shafts are tipped, and this, that, and the other. But if you're willing to spend enough money, you could get like a pro setup. You could go to the yeah. to the kingdom and get fit like you're. A yeah, and you're still pro. like t- Tiger and Rory. Like this year, are using like the stealth too. Yeah, just like you and me and Trent. Like we're using the stealth. It's, right. So yours might be modified a little differently, but you're using the same fucking club. Right. So there was that aspect of it, and then there was the money aspect of it, which is basically they're going to have to spend all this money to develop this new ball that goes shorter because they they're not just they, you know they. They're going to have to make a product with the best players in the world. It's going to have to be really good. They're not going to spend all that money and then not be able to sell that ball to the public. To the masses, right. So that's why bifurcation kind of went out the window. So at that point, they were... to push that cart faster. At faster. that point, they were they were faced with two <laughs> options. Either roll it back for everyone or abandon the rollback cartoon. completely. Sorry, can I ask a question? There's a guy just rolling a cart yeah. as slow as um, This word <laughs> bifurcation? Yeah. What does that mean? It means split into two. <laughs> you can okay. bifurcate. Make it split down the middle. Okay. Basically. So two different rules. Gotcha. You begged somebody to push your cart as slow as <laughs> Brendan possible. Jones. Producer it Brendan Jones is picking it up. Over. He picks He's it up for him. So he can Sorry, leave. we're distracting Daniel. No, no, you're fine. It's just... So I think... I actually do want to know. So at that Bifurcate he used in his statement 13 times. I kept seeing that word in Rory's statement. Yeah, bifurcate. Is yeah to make it basically two separate. You have a couple bottles of wine last night. Or yeah, he fired first off. tweet in a long time. Yeah, and and so th- they were at that point faced with: do we roll the ball back for everybody, or do we not roll the ball back at all? And they chose to roll the, ba- the ball back for everybody. So who's they again? Like the it's USGA, the, the RNA, the, the, the makers of of the rules of golf. So starting in 2028, the pros are going to have to use this new conforming ball, and starting in 2030, amateurs are going to have to use the new conforming ball. It's going to go less far. <laughs> the cart's still going. <laughs> Um, 
Yeah, so and this was obviously a topic like I feel like whenever a topic like this, I can't pinpoint it, but I know the feeling. It's a Brandel topic. So I'll see Brandel's <laughs> yes. tweets. And he Hell was saying yeah. that the cost is going to fall on the amateur because all these pros with these new balls, they'll just get them for free. Mm -hmm. So it's like and, and all these companies, like you're saying, the, the companies are going to have to R&D and make this new ball. And I feel like that's probably going to increase prices to a degree. Yeah. And that's going to fall on the amateur golfer, not the pro golfer. Yeah, it's also just like my my thing is is you know the the re I understand the the logic for doing it. You know, long irons aren't as prevalent in golf as they used to be. It's more driver wedge than it used to be, but that's just predicated on the, on the notion that like the past was better, and that we need to go back to this because this was better. The vast majority of golfers don't want this. The vast majority of of recreational golfers, the vast no, majority. Dude, we said we asked Taylor made like years ago if they could just give us one of those uh, illegal ball that goes. Forever, yeah, we can fuck exactly. I want to use. I want to just play better golf. The vast majority of people are trying to hit the ball further. They Everyone is, except for like a hundred people. Right. So that's what Brandel's saying is, you, yeah. they made a lot. And I understand if you could just snap your fingers and have the pros hit it less far, and everybody else, then I guess in a vacuum that would make sense. But it doesn't exist in a vacuum. And for better or for worse, the equipment companies have a big role in the game. Golf is also different than baseball because you don't have a bunch of guys at your local club buying a bunch of bats and a bunch of baseballs. Right. That whole marketing aspect just doesn't even exist. Right. right. So I, I, you're right. They're making a rule for all of golfers. Like the LPGA girls are going to, you know, they're going to be using a rolled back ball. And every and every amateur competition, you know, everyone's going to have to use it. And it seems like they're just making a rule because 150 players – the, right. the game has changed. Every sport changes. In basketball, they're shooting more three pointers. In in baseball, it's you know home runs or strikeouts. In football, they pass the ball a lot more. Things change and evolve, and I, you don't see those other you know oh this is this is terrible. We got to go back to what it was like in the 1950s. Right. If golf were run as a democracy, with everybody gets a vote, this would be like a 98 landslide. percent landslide. It's not close. I'm using the I'm you know use the ball that goes further. There is so there was a, yeah. a, a poll that came out and yeah. it was like 70 percent of golfers were just like yeah I'm just like not gonna. Imagine do that. we've talked about. It. Imagine going out there and using the rolled back ball. What an <laughs> asshole you got to be! If somebody plays that, you know you got an asshole on your hands. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, what do you guys? What, uh, I'm Taylor made one. Yeah, I'm Taylor made four, but it's the rolled back version. I'm okay. using the pro ball. I'm gonna yeah. use a pro ball today. Okay, <laughs> pro ball. <laughs> Six five oh. percent. That's, That's the other thing too is like if you're gonna if you're gonna actually do it to to bring like you know the cypresses and all these. Make courses, it a lead ball. Make this thing go nowhere. It have to exactly. They have to make drives go like two fifty, two sixty. This five percent. The the college kids are already so much longer. The distances are going to be like the same on tour in a couple. In also, a couple what's years. gonna happen as these as these manufacturing companies are gonna keep making their ball go further until twenty thirty, and then all of a, it might even be more of a drastic stop though. That's a good point. Like we're we we got we can't talk about it yet, but like we're we're seeing what TaylorMade has a has a ball coming out that's phenomenal, yeah. And like the stats are insane. It goes yeah. farther, it goes farther, it goes simply, straighter. We all hit it. Goes and like it's, same I think it's farther. Their, and I don't want to. I don't know what their marketing pitch is going to be, but I think it's like the furthest their ball has ever jumped from ball one to ball two, from last we'll ball to this ball. We saw some stunning numbers. Stunning so. numbers. We did like a legit test, and we saw stunning numbers in the difference. So that's only 2024. They're going to make probably one for 2026. They're probably going to make one for 2028. It's going to keep and getting then, better, and then all of a sudden 2030 is going to hit, and you're going to go all the way back to. Whatever the hell you're going to go back to. That's it's funny. Like I play golf with so many just normal weekend golfers. And I can't think of any that just hit the ball too far to make golf fun. <laughs> my buddy Tom, well, my buddy Tom hits the ball to... too far. I have one he friend, might, Tom, yeah. hits the ball too far. That's yes. the problem. With he hits a nine iron like 200 yards. He's got to use the rollback. He has to. It's insane. He plays golf once a year and he hits the ball 200 yards. That's the challenge with making well. rules for Joes and pros in the same set of rules. It's tough. Wait, yeah. so is the reason why it's, it's not just the pros who have to use this because – the companies that are making the ball don't want to spend money on just a ball that the pros are going to use. I think it's that, and I think they also want to be able to market to people. You should buy these balls because yeah. the pros use this. It's it's about their bottom line, but all their commercials also wanna, are those guys like hitting shots yeah. and spinning balls. We all know can. that marketing saying you can this makes you bigger, stronger, longer, fast. Like all that stuff works. Not like 
you don't want to condense people. You don't want right. to bring them down. Like buy that's this not... so you can play all the golf courses. Yeah. No, 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 that's not going to work. Yeah, exactly. Like the game is has been on a, such a great trajectory. More people are playing. More young people are playing. You've got things like Top Golf. You got things like Pop Stroke. You know, the barriers to entry are getting yeah. are getting smaller. Golf's up like twenty two percent or something. Golf is that up, is a golf is number. up yes. big time. I think it was like thirty two percent. Saying of kids. golf is up twenty two percent. It's just like golf. It's just <laughs> on yeah, the dude. stock market. G O L F. What? Golf is up twenty two percent. Don't you get about it? <laughs> golf's up twenty two percent. Any other questions, class? Yeah. yeah. Why do you guys have a golf podcast? Because golf up. 22%. Are you talking pro- probably participation? Just or everything, everything, right? right? But it's like it's like it, the, the, the narrative around the game is changing. The narrative around the game is changing, and this sends a message to it's just like classic golf being like, oh, actually, like you you, you you hit it too far. How much is it is just like a bunch of old guys in a room making their decisions? And that's the other thing is that you know a lot of the the guys who are making the decisions are. The members of these clubs that feel like they're obsolete or they're these like traditionalists. They're doing who, this to feel important. I don't know if they're doing it to feel important. They think they know what's best for the game and that everyone else's opinion doesn't really matter. You made a good point where you're like, we're essentially saying that the way it used to be is better, which is that's not the case in any walk of Fuck life no. ever. No, man. No. Dude, watching Rory McIlroy hit the ball 340 in the air is way cooler than whatever the fuck they were doing. I mean, that's just cool. But also, like, why are we assuming that hitting a long iron is important into a green? Like, why can't golf just morph into, yeah, we don't do that anymore. We just hit nine irons. Or we do it, but it's less it's less frequent, and it's into par fives, and it's on, like, who par, cares? it's on like, long par threes. Oh, yeah, we used to hit five iron. Now we hit nine iron. Who cares? Buddy, I got long irons into greens. Like, who, ca- like who actually cares about what right. golf right. turns that's into? That's the thing. Most of us still hit long irons all the time. <laughs> I got the right. best equipment on the planet. The I got vast majority of us. Of it. I got Why is golf trying access. to I'm save the long like iron? I don't know. I, I get like maybe for the art of like watching a guy do it, but like for the for the actual sport, why does that matter? Listen, you roll this ball back far enough, you're going to bring just woods back into play for right. me. Maybe they I'm just going to be hitting three woods all the time. You know, they would say that that all that used to, that was like a hard skill and that differentiated a lot of the best players was, you know, are they able to hit long irons high and control them? And and the other thing, and this is it's also not, the reason people are hitting it farther is not just the golf ball. The, no. the drivers are way better. And young players know the scientific formula that produces long drives because of trackman they know they got to hit up on it they know what their spin should be and instruction because we know stats better is saying hit it far we'll figure out the rest of it later you you can't put the toothpaste back in the you can't legislate against progress i guess is is where i'm at it's never a good idea i just think it's like it's a very golf thing to do, and I thought we were. I, I was hoping that we were past those what kind is, of moves. What does Tiger Woods think about this? I, I agree with whatever he, he said. Bifurcation. Yeah, he's a rollback guy, basically. But he doesn't think Shit. it should be. He doesn't think I it know. should be for the. That's why I haven't the, taken a yeah, amateur yet. But but there's just there's just realities in the golf industry that make that basically impossible from a from see a that I think is the wrong reason. It's the reason, but I think it's the wrong one. Well, if t- it's like we can't market this ball to people, it's like I fucking figure it out. I don't know what to tell yeah. you. Tiger's a big believer, I think, in that. Not just, but that rolling the distance back and changing the ball, like if it has to be more spinny, that's harder to control. And he believes that the technology has gotten to the point now where it really neutralizes different skill differential differentials. Right, it's probably the brought the pack more together. Where that's his point is everybody could kind of just hit it, like if you're decent or on tour or whatever, everybody now just hits it straighter in the right distance because of technology, not because of like right. skill set. Like Tiger in 2000 was just way better than everybody. Correct. And it was right. it was made even more evidence by the fact that he was just, not everybody was using this equipment that made everybody the same. You didn't used to be able to swing as hard as you can now because the drivers are so good. They're like, I'm just going to go out there and rip it. And if I hit it off the toe, I'll lose five or you know eight yards where it used to be that like that could be a round yeah. killing you know snap hook right and look from like the purest standpoint i think the biggest example people go to is like the 13th old augusta where it's like guys now just pound it over those trees and have like a nine or eight iron in where they're like if you go watch the footage from the 70s or 80s or whatever it's like i just standing back there from 240 out on a up on a side hill lie with the, the creek and the whole deal with like a five wood in their hands or a three wood right and their whole tournament's on the line on that swing whereas now they just dump a nine iron in the middle of green or whatever so you get that but that's such a minimal case it's not like, like those guys didn't have four iron in every green it's like maybe a couple times a tournament it's like not yeah it's like it's i'm crazy. not there's i'm not saying there's no benefits to the rollback there definitely are and i completely understand it would be probably more entertaining if they but it's like it, it doesn't exist in a vacuum it's like there are there are negatives and they, and I think they outweigh the positives. Yeah, if they want to roll back the pro ball, I don't care. 
They yeah. can do that if they want. Roy McIlroy, I don't believe an average golfer giving up five to ten yards off the tee is going to have a material effect on their actual score, handicap, or enjoyment of the game. I, I don't think that's I true. I just disagree. I think that's wrong. I think it, we'll take every little advantage we can get is what yes. it comes down my to. My dad hitting the ball ten yards short for my dad who you know hits it 215 down the middle every time, hitting it ten yards shorter is a, will make a big difference. It's a big now, deal. What they'll say is, okay, just move up a tee. The USGA is trying to have has been trying to get people to move up a tee for a decade, and it just doesn't happen. People just are stubborn. They so, just don't do it. Yeah, maybe they will now. Trying to know. get people to move up a tee with the current ball. Yes. And now you're actually like ruining that off whole the fairway. What are we gonna do? That? <laughs> yeah. Right. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, the more I think about it, like bifurcation in a vacuum would would make a lot of sense. What and does it bifurcation would, mean? Keep throwing splitting it. into Got like it. making into two rules would make sense. Like baseball. But it's just yep. the realities of the golf industry kind of don't allow for it to happen. Uh. Yeah, but and this is really, also happening in what four or five years, six years, seven years? 2028 for the pros. That's for that's for twenty thirty trying to deal with for the birds. <laughs> yeah. right. This guy, how old are you going to be in twenty thirty? Uh, twenty thirty is that seven years from now? Yeah, I'll be forty one. Yeah, so it's like, are we even? Gonna you think I'm going to give a fuck about the rollback? Dude, at we're that trying situation? to get to January. I do a golf podcast in twenty twenty three. I'm worried about it. You're going right? to be a yacht in on a yacht in the Bahamas by then. Yeah, let's get these I'll guys be in to a January. Plot in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> <laughs> Cedar Memorial. Just tending the land. <laughs> That's uh, a nice hat on you, Danny. I, I don't usually give you compliments. Great hat. Nice hat. I, I appreciate it. It's like, a, it's like a new, it's like the new thing. I've never yeah. really seen like the um, seam go on the front of the hat like that. Yeah, it's close to, to the Ricky Barnes hat, but yeah. way better. Yeah. Remember that hat? That yes, fucking yeah, guy yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm liking this hat a lot. Taylor made, uh, they saw my videos about how bad my hats are, and they sent me about a 80 XXL hats. That's so a I'm, winner. I'm, I'm dialed now. That's a that's, really good one. It's yeah. a great hat. Thank you. Carl's, I like How does it feel that get real actual golf, uh, hat compliments? It feels really good. Your hat been, fucking I've been sucks. getting buried for my loser. hat. That stinks. Imagine wearing a hat like that. that I had my bald sucks, spots really dude. coming in, so I had to. The champ. <laughs> I would have worn I would have worn a hat that said a whole lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> the champ, dude. Your hair may grow fast, but after going to Sport Clips haircuts, you'll wish it grew even faster. That's because Sport Clips has the best seats in hair, and that may or may not be because they happen to be right in front of TVs playing sports all day, every day. We love sports. We do. College love football sports. podcasts. Sports. Love sports. We, we, talk kinds of football stuff. Uh, we know that watching sports while getting a haircut sure beats watching your reflection get a haircut. A mere joke. Which is why Sport Clips every day is clippers and curveballs, high tops and Hail Marys, and even waves and wickets. If you're into that kind of thing. What's wicket? Waves and wickets? Is that cricket? Yeah, right? Or no? is that lacrosse? Is that waves on TV? and wickets. Lacrosse. What's a wicket? I don't know. Through the, I feel like a wicket might be, is that not what they're called in cricket? Don't people say through the wickets? Are we just you thinking oh, that because wicked it sounds is like a, cricket? Probably. Wicked. <laughs> cricket? Yeah, probably. Now I'm wicked. thinking about the Broadway play Wicked. It makes me think of a wicker cricket. basket, which is what it's they cricket. Have in it's a thing that they that they are bowling into. All right, you can watch that at Sport Clips. Yeah. You can check in with the pros and men's hair at Sport Clips as well and totally check out with pure uninterrupted relaxation. So come watch an endless stream of sports on TV while getting an awesome haircut. Sport clips, it's a game changer. Go get your haircut at Sport Clips. It is a game changer. <laughs> um, John Rahm rumors are uh, at this point. I mean, this we're are we in a if there's this much smoke, there's got to be fire situation. I think he's definitely, and I think Jordan Spieth said like, I know he's making a decision. You know these these guys. If you're an agent for one of these players, you ha you have you should be in contact with these people. That is like your job as a as to live a, people. Yeah, yeah. And seeing what and, and I'm sure they're throwing numbers at him, and it's a decision that he has to make. I don't pretend to know what decision that he's made. I know they've tried to recruit him before, and I'm sure they're trying to recruit him again, and they probably up the price. I will say it'd be strange timing because I know Jay and Yasir are supposed to meet this week. Yep. And it would just be a very strange thing to happen in the middle of this negotiation, which is crunch time now. Tiger talked about it's December. We're up all day, all night. We're trying to figure this out. Just would seem like a weird. A weird time for the reigning Masters champion to jump from one to another. I uh, I think John Rahm has become, I was thinking about this this morning, has become my single favorite voice in golf. I like how raw he is, how real he is, how impactful his voice is because he's the Masters champ. He's one of the best players in the world. And he doesn't, I, I, I just think he comes off so honest in everything that he kind of mm -hmm. talks about. And he has many quotes out there basically saying, like, I don't play golf for money. I don't really need the money. Like some pretty negative quotes about live that he has. It's not, he said it's not a golf tournament. 
He yeah, said, shotgun but like start. deeper than that. Yeah. He like had some, which I didn't realize because we kind of talked last show or something about how Rom, like he has been, when he talked about Sergio and all that, he's like, I don't hate those guys for going. And I thought he had been a little bit more lukewarm about it. He has had some pretty like clearly anti-live stuff, quotes that he said. So for him to go, to me, would be shocking. Having said that, if the number is what we were saying, 300 million, like I think we would all agree, he has to go. Like, Especially how do you right, not go? Especially right now when like it likely will work itself out and, and everyone's going to be playing. He's getting, I think within a year it works itself and out. And he's going to he's won the Masters, so he's into all the majors. Like, Yeah, if they're offering you that kind of money, it'd be very, very difficult. He also he hasn't said anything, which I know people are saying that, where it's like normally when these rumors would sprout up, he would say something somewhere. And he just, might be on the Matty Fitz where he's like, what are they saying? What? He's like, just doesn't even know what's yeah. going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would also be pretty crazy at this point for like, Shipnock and all the stuff he was putting out to just be completely wrong. Oh, you're saying about Phil's when he said it, that Phil said yeah, it. Yeah, and deal? he's like, they're putting out, and we've seen multiple counts being like from sources, like literally, it's it's locked in, it's like done. There's definitely some some talks going on, but I, you know, that's also been the case in the in the years prior with Rom, and you know, he's come, he's decided not to do it. So I don't like all this because whenever this pops up, all the golf meme accounts make up a fake quote from Rom. That you know, oh, what am I going to take six hundred million from Liv, or do I want the opportunity to play the John Deere Classic every year? And huh. I get tagged in it four thousand times. It's always times. the John Deere. People, I know people think whether they think it's real or not. Car going by, um, I don't know, but I get tagged constantly, and they're just like, oh, ricochet shot, and I'm like, it's a made up quote, <laughs> not a real thing. So <laughs> yeah. it's not a real ricochet shot. It would so, be it would be the biggest loss that the PGA Tour has had, bar none. Yeah, by far. I mean, I just don't. I said it two shows ago. What's going to be the difference in a year or two? I think it's all going to be the same shit. Well, if this deal falls apart, if they don't come yeah. to a framework agreement and they have John, I mean, John Rom, it was a big deal when Cameron Smith left. Yeah, it was. He was a reigning champion. I think he was like number two in the world. Rom is a, is a different level. He's 28 years old, maybe 29. I think he just turned 29, prime of his career, reigning Masters champion. It would be the John biggest gift for Rahm sure. John is the fifth, fourth biggest star in the world of golf. Tiger, Phil, Rory, John, Rob. You think he's bigger than Spieth? Spieth, well, I don't even know that I put Phil up there at this point. I think Phil's below that now. You do? Yeah, I don't think people are that jacked about watching Phil play golf. I think he's too old. My opinion. I think he's third. He's fucking up there. That's yes, what I'm he's, he's big fucking time. up he's, there. He's man. Big I think it's Tiger, Rory, Rom. He's very famous. You win the Masters. Yeah, I think like, that's. I mean, I just, you know, I would, in my own, I think Spieth's a little bit higher. It just has that it factor, but. It might be third or fourth or fifth. I just don't think Spieth is relevant anymore. Because he stinks kind of, relatively yeah. speaking. Did you see that he had his buddy on the bag for uh, this week and they made a bet that every birdie on Thursday, so the Eagles were playing on Thursday night, I guess he's a big yeah, so, uh, Dallas fan, or they were, oh, yeah, Dallas yeah. was playing, every birdie he would drink a beer and every Eagle he would drink rival three that, beers. He? Yeah, he's my friend. You got scoop cupped. I wasn't at the tournament. Someone didn't want to pay for it. Oh, you found you were like I don't think it's worth. It. Well, it was a lot of money. <laughs> I think the third spot is a heavy. I think, it's, didn't want to I think well, it's. Oh no, go ahead. I, I, and uh, yeah, it was the guy. Made, he made eight birdies and, and an eagle, so it was eleven beers. So you made two eagles. Did you make two eagles? <laughs> yeah. And it, was, it ended up being eleven. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I think the third spot is a heavyweight fight between John Rahm and Justin Thomas. <laughs> In terms of relevance, I think it's Spieth's below both of them. I really don't find him that relevant anymore. And now, I mean, just relevancy. I thought you guys were talking about like when golf is happening who are the top dogs because obviously phil's not a part of that but phil's definitely extremely relevant just right the now. way that i feel in the golf world phil, now i don't even know what the criteria so is. here's the criteria you remember when you when you see a leaderboard and they, they arbitrarily list the guy up top it'll be like yeah. if there's 10 guys tied for third it'll be tiger woods up top yeah who's listed first between phil mickelson justin thomas and jordan speed Phil, I think Phil. Dude, I think it's Phil, man. I do yeah. think they it's wrote Phil. A, they wrote a fucking book about him. It like changed the world, the world of golf for a year. The, no, the one I, reason it's so it's like just because I don't see him that much. I don't see him play. He's that's also what Phil I'm saying. Mickelson. I agree. In the no, same vein that. that like Tiger Woods is Tiger Woods. Like, no, Phil I'm Mickelson saying if he, Phil I don't see him play. But then if he was playing and playing well, I'd be like, oh shit. Yeah, and he's still like on the rival tour. He's the one that like started this whole thing. He's the fucking, he's the boogeyman. He is, he is the guy. Like on a week to week basis in golf. Because he's on the other tour, or whatever it might be, I just don't think like we really see him in a relevant way as much. I really don't. Yeah, like, it's weird. But it weirdly makes him more relevant when I do see him. Totally. Like when he vaulted up and finished second of the Masters this year, that was insane. Right. That's what they're I mean. like. What? No, Phil he's. I, I'm, I'm probably not giving him enough credit. Again, I just don't. It's out of sight, out of mind to a degree. But yeah, Phil's definitely still up there. He is. I mean, we talked about his him liking a tweet for like 20 minutes earlier. Yeah. yeah. He's still very much in the. 
in the public eye of golf. John the, uh, Rahm going there, they would have fucking Phil Mickelson, John Rahm, Dustin Johnson, Cam Brooks Smith, Kepka, Cam Smith. Like that's yeah. a fucking. Has roster. the sport washing worked? Of course. I mean, listen to the way that we're talking about it. That's, well, the big thing back, is go back to two years ago, and it's like if a guy takes this deal, not only is he disrespecting us, but he's disrespecting his family. He's disrespecting America. Well, nine eleven victims. I think like it was like holy shit. I was getting called me, the live guy because I was like, well, it's a lot of fucking money. It's like, well, you have to stand for something. If you don't stand for something, the world collapses. And it's like, well, now John Rush should probably just take. Well, the that big money. thing that changed for me the framework it deal. It's like it's like perfect. We're just like, yeah, why not take everything? The framework deal changed everything because then it's like, oh, nobody cares for the but wild that's just sport right isn't that yes just, yeah well, oh, they just, everything the, the, yeah. they just ended up being the casino i mean it worked to where saudis people ended can, up being the casino so dude i did like uh for this hulu show that's coming out i did like a dan rapaport style netflix interviews where like you basically tell them what a part of you know and then like it was all about the live deal and the merger and the whole thing and then they kind of like got me into like a wedge question at the end of it where they were going through about how I was, I was, I was riffing about sports washing and this is, there's no logical way for them to make money. So the only conclusion is they're doing it to sports wash their reputation. And then they got to the end and they're like, so based on everything you've just said is the PGA tour now participating in sports washing after the deal. And I was like, yes, right. <laughs> I, I, I largely, like I it. largely I like, align yeah. with Roar on it where like, I w- you feel so strongly about something, and then the rug gets pulled out from under you, and you just get disenchanted. There's yeah. no there's yeah. no moral thing to stand on anymore because the PGA Tour signed the deal. Right. There's just no. So moral then you're just like, all right, this is what it is. Uh, I think it's worked where people like can do business with the Saudis, and it's not. But I, I think I still think the public knows more about Saudi Arabia's bad stuff than they would have before. All of well, this. think about how much we've talked about it. Yeah, right. Tons. No one knew. Well, who I'm Muhammad way more bin educated Salman. on like who they actually are as opposed to just like hearing about it. Yeah. yeah. Like, once in a while you see it on the news or something we know a lot about him we know yeah. the names we know every like you know like his whole entire business you know mbs's yeah. whole entire rise to power at yeah. this point it's like it's pretty crazy right and like what they do on it like we wouldn't have talked about saudi arabia once on this show I <laughs> no bet, like, never we didn't for the first five years why would not it? yeah right. no reason to and now we're like those guys are bad we're talking about <laughs> <podcasts."> <laughs> like, and now they run golf <laughs> they just they yeah. very much do yeah. it is amazing though it's like yeah those guys in the beginning, they just they saw the same thing that like we're talking about now, and they got fucking shafted by the media. Yeah. They were like, "You guys aren't realizing it. everyone's gonna be okay with this." <laughs> and like, I'm just making money for my family. Yeah. Like, Pat Perez is like, "I don't give a fuck anymore. I'm just gonna go make money." And yeah. like, guys in a year are gonna do the same. And we're like, "You're bad." And he's like, "No, I'm not." You're and now bad. like, Rom's like, "If you don't do that, you're an idiot." <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? It's true. It has flipped. Yeah, but it's just because they the, the it's flipped so much that we're like, he's an idiot if he doesn't take it because because of the framework. Because <laughs> I think it's all going to be the same. Yeah, and it is the same now. Yeah, except he's just going to have still you still got John Rom playing in like Saudi Arabia. Like like he's going to be playing on on lit. Like that's still going to be wi- that would be wild. That's but it's, it's less wild to me now. Yeah, like it was a rogue league him before. Play, now are they play on the CW still. Like where are, where are they? Are they I think so. It's like watching John Rom like in a team Sports event on the CW. That's in true. A bit of a there. It's it's it was more wild to me when they were just the rogue league being backed by the Saudis. Now everybody's the league being backed by the Saudis. It's all the same to me. The PJ Tour needs that money badly. They need the money badly because they have inflated the purses so much. And the money's not the money's not flowing in like the yes, the ratings are up, but they're not up two X or whatever they have. You know, th- these tournaments are now all for 20 million dollars and like they're running out of cash. Yeah. Large, I overall, the revenue is not field, up that much. No, do it'll think, be. I mean, at the end of the day, it'll be better for golf. There's just way more money. In golf. Guys might be playing in the Barcelona. Do you think Rom sure. is waiting? Yes, the author could get a tea time. Do you think what, Rom is waiting to see what happens with the PIF deal? Like once it's finalized and then he's going to make his decision. Like you're saying, that, would if that falls through and he's if he agrees and then that falls through. Isn't that like the worst situation for him of all time? Yeah, it's it's definitely a different calculus depending on the way that this goes. Yeah. So maybe he's waiting to see how it all f- plays out. There's a chance, too. I saw like Tiger was alluding to some like other financial backing, basically. That yeah, they've had to be Saudi. They've had offers. Endeavor pulled out, but there's still like Fenway Sports Group is in the mix. You know, there's there's other people who are trying to invest in golf. Because we've said forever. Henry's like, going to fucking own golf. <laughs> Isn't that Fenway Sports? Well, we've yeah, said forever, is. right? Like, if, if Canada was just the ones investing right. in golf, nobody would care. Just a win. True. So if that's, it's kind of could be the same thing if they could just find the same funding but from somebody else. The royal family of Britain. can get that, that funding money. somewhere that's else. That's what I'm saying. I just can't they got see the most money. Got money. The Saudis got more money than everybody. Yeah, and they have an ulterior motive. Does the royal family want this shit? They got a ton of money. I've been watching The Crown. Yeah, they got Is good. Frankie, oh Frankie in the God. car on the way from the airport with a bunch of people. There were like six of us in the car. Tried to spark up a conversation with the crown. He's the only guy in the car. Go, that so it. everyone caught up on the crown and there was dead <laughs> silence. It's the last season, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Was the have you? I heard like the Diana episode was like controversial. So I, yeah, I want someone else to watch it because I really I don't know where the controversy is lying. Like you can fall on either side where it's like. So obviously Princess Diana passed away. No, and it's like Damn a spoiler it. alert for the show. Yeah, um, she dies. Devastating. And it's like um, it's it's an amazing the beginning of the Crown seasons were pretty boring. Like where she's like coming into power as the queen or whatever. To me, like I didn't really get too into it. It's all this new stuff now where it's like, all right, Princess Diana. I know that story. I really wanted to see how they portrayed it. And uh, yeah, you could totally tell that like they took the stance of like this is the telling that like the royal family has of this of the situation yeah it was an accident the driver was that's how they over it yeah it's an accident like the driver Speeding like got pulled out from a bar and he was told to go drive them is that what the, happened yeah he had alcohol in the system yeah three times over the limit in france what the fuck i didn't know that i i can understand people the paparazzi was out of control he just, he just was drunk well, yeah, then they were getting, I mean, this is what's in the show, right? It's like, who knows what the whole situation actually was. It's, like, it'd be, I think it'd be harder. I think she was going to get engaged that night to like a. Uh, Syed or whatever. Yeah, right? Dodi, whatever his name was. was. Dodi. They weren't happy about Dodi. Dodi. He was Egyptian. Yeah. And like his father want, always wanted to be like paired up with the Royals. He like, he was a, a billionaire, like a, like a Saudi type yeah. money Dude, guy. That, those guys are, that family is tied to Shipner talks about in his book. That family is tied to like Yasser and the guys yeah, who are now is. behind golf. It's crazy. So he was like obsessed with wanting he's obsessed with wanting his son to get it like his son, he, he basically forced his son, this is how they tell the story, to go like woo this woman. Riz up <laughs> Princess Diana. Diana. <laughs> and he does, dude. He like Did takes her on Diana her fuck. Riz up Princess Diana. <laughs> yeah. And he take he takes her he takes her on like <laughs> all these like jets gosh. and like away from all the paparazzi because the paparazzi was insane for princess diana oh, insane, she yeah. couldn't go anywhere and she had like crazy anxiety and um and then and like the show basically essentially says like you have to like get engaged or else you'll never be my equal like this is what the dad's telling his son being like if you if you get me into this family like you'll you'll get the company and the son's like oh you've never offered me that he's like yeah like now you're me like you're you're the guy you're gonna fucking marry prince diana like you're you're i finally love you and like so there was all this talk like he, he went and got an engagement ring the day she died and like so like did like did the royal family hear about that and they're like you're not fucking getting engaged to this guy that's gonna like ruin all of our things that we're doing like we're not gonna be tied to this family and then all of a sudden she dies that night in a car crash it's like what the fuck imagine your dad telling you i'll only love you if you riz up the literal yeah. princess of England. dude it's pretty crazy that's man the you biggest get, catch in sorry the dad to be honest it's i would actually if you guys don't want to spend too much time watching all of like the lead up Go watch the last episode. Of, it's just a historical episode of yeah. like the reenactment of pr a major death in the history of the world. Yeah, it's a really, really interesting episode. It's just the last episode of part one of the most recent season. She was like my age when she died. Yeah, man. Yeah, how old was she when she died? Was she thirty six? Thirty five or thirty six? Yeah, she, yeah. Her kids were young. It's so fucking. It's wild. Yeah. The divorce. Did they get into the divorce? The divorce was like very scandalous, right? Yeah, yeah. Because he cheated, right? Well, he was like apparently always loved the woman that he's married to now, but yeah. she was like of a lower class. Yes. So and like getting her. divorced at that point when he's supposed to be the king is right. like unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And yeah. he's like, uh, "What about love, mummy?" He kept saying that to the to Charles did. Yeah, but love, mummy. But love, mummy. Said it just is like, love not country. an option, mummy? <laughs> I actually am nailing that Prince Charles. It's a very yeah. You're doing the proper accent, mummy. Well. Isn't that sort of the argument for Markle and? Like, his, wasn't he just like, I love this girl, so yes. I'm going to marry yeah, he's yeah. Just, yeah, And he's, he's like, I'm fucking out of here. Peace. Yeah, well, the king's speech is all what about mistake. the king abdicated to marry some American socialite, and then he gave up the king so that he could marry, because at that That's point, right. he couldn't marry a divorcee gotcha. and be the king. They were on good terms. So the show makes it look like they were on good terms right before she went to Paris. And it's like, he she hugs Prince Tr uh, Charles, and he's like, we can do this, right? We can be like mother and we, we can be mother and father to these kids and she's like yeah like the, the last time they saw each other whatever storybook storybook it's like yeah we're gonna we're, we're fine like i love you like even though we didn't work out as as lovers we're still like mother and father when to these in reality kids. Yeah. two probably fucking hated each other right well yeah probably she tried to ruin that family and like she tried to show that they're like a corrupt psychotic like go off, regime queen. go you off know? princess yeah. she tried to because they were like hiding her from everyone yes. and fucking keeping her in the room she had like a eating disorder and they didn't want anyone to know about it it was dark shit princess diana yes princess you diana know. was a real one 
She, yeah, man. It's fucking awesome. I'm like, I haven't gotten to talk about it with anyone, so now I'm just talking about it on the show. Yeah, yeah it fell are. flat in that car that we were in. Um, it felt really flat. One of the most important apps you ever get on your phone. If you find any subscriptions you forget about or you paid twice and didn't really realize it, we've all been there. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and conceals your unwanted uh, cancels, not conceals. Yep. They could try to conceal it on you. Rocket you got to cancel finds it. it. That's right. And cancel your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. With Rocket Money, you can easily cancel the ones you don't want with just the press of a button. No more long hold times or annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money does all the work for you. Uh, Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. I didn't know that. That's, yeah. That's a, a lot of percent. Rocket Money also found that I was um, subscribed to Amazon Prime twice because we had at my sister-in-law's house we signed in once to go watch a Thursday night football game and then they went to go watch a movie on it and um, they hit like subscribe and I was signed in on mine on their TV and it was bizarre and I had two subscriptions and it said that I had two of the same subscriptions for Amazon Prime and it, I canceled that. one of them. It's really Can't a financial it. tool this app. It is. Yeah. It is. It, aside from the subscriptions it breaks down all of your spending every point month. In, uh, in technology it's so hard to keep track of all the things that you're oh, paying God. for especially with all the streaming services and like you've yeah. got nine credit cards you don't know what's attached to what and it's just like this just tells you this is where it's coming out of it's coming out of your bank and it's going to this and it's doing this too much yep so let's just cancel that yep with over 5 million users and counting, Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $720 a year and $1 billion in total savings thus far. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your un unwanted subscriptions. Manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash four. That's rocketmoney.com slash four. Rocketmoney.com slash four. Anybody got any takes on this college football playoff situation? Yeah, I do. You know, my Hawks um, fucking <laughs> just couldn't get it done against Michigan. I we bet both the over 21.5. It was so frustrating. I Sorry. Was, I bet the yeah. over thinking they'd score like seven points. It was and, uh, so frustrating. I've been telling you, you one been, touchdown they needed. I've been telling you for months. You're I like, know. I didn't think about betting the Zero? over these Hawks. I'm the over under. The over under. 0.5 points. 0.5 in the half, first half. They, first, <laughs> it didn't hit. Bro, they're like they were like 13 and 0 unders this year. The goats of the under. The Jets, the Jets are Iowa. We talked about this. The Jets yeah. Like if they awesome. won, they went ten, they're still 10 and 3. If the Iowa Hawkeyes That's of this a, season imagine. had an average offense, they would be a top 5 team. They have that house as their quarterback. Who is that guy? Yeah. yeah. He, he needs to absolute sweet. fucking refrigerator. They yeah. they kept on Deacon Hill, my guy. Brian Shout out. Ferenc just a, the just whole a time. Thick just the worst coach in the world. Who? Brian Fer Ferenc. Yeah, he's got Ferenc. They Ferenc, they showed him so many times. He just said he had no solution. He's gone. He's, had, he's had 12 games to yeah. figure it out. And he no couldn't solution. figure it out. It's just nothing. Dude. No. He's, he's stepping down at the end of the year. So Good. it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's out. He's out of here. <laughs> he, um, it's a hard team to talk about in terms of like, you want to criticize the offense. They won 10 games. They actually won 11 games. If people watch a Minnesota game, that was not a fair catch. That should have been a touchdown. They won 10, 11 games with the worst it's offense insane. in the country. I don't. It's like a hard team to criticize, but it's an easy team to criticize. Yeah. I can't even fathom that. The, uh, I don't know. In terms of like the the four teams that got in, I'm not the biggest college football watcher, but I definitely get into it towards the end. I'm you know gambling on the games. All my buddies are huge college football fans. Mm -hmm. Alabama is one of my buddies, my best man Kyle, and then my brother in law is Ohio State, and they are just fucking going at it all the time. And then my other buddy, Big Rob's Michigan. So like all Jesus. three, it's crazy. And um, they have family ties to all the schools and all that. So listening to them kind of go back and forth, it's like exhausting because there's no solution. It's just like whatever. There's no good solution. It's and then sucks. and I saw Feidelberg tweet about this, but he's like, you hear college football fans be like, it's not fair. Only four teams get to go in. We have all these good conferences. And then he's like, my response is always, why don't you guys make like divisions and playoffs and wild cards and like championships? And like, that's fucking stupid. Right. That's so it's like they want you. both ways. They want <laughs> they want the con like. Like they get hard on the conversation. College oh, football yeah. fans get hard Big part on the conversation. Who's in? Conversation who's sport. out? Yeah. I was again. Like, I was with my mom yesterday, and they, they were there was a panel talking about it. And she's like, "All they do is talk about it. It's all, all they it, do is that's talk what about it. Is. It's they the, love talking about it's it. It's like Tiger's all about the walk. It's all about the talk in college football. The politicians it's, are getting involved. It's, I saw Ron DeSantis ones? said something, and then Rick Scott, who's a senator from Florida, yeah. was demanding today to that the committee release all text calls and emails about their decision. <laughs> so here's what, where I fall yeah, on the incredible. FSU thing. They're going to storm. The, if if Alabama didn't get in, they might have stormed the Capitol. <laughs> here's where that. I stand release on the FSU thing. The FSU thing is wild because I didn't know until I 
I finally looked into it that part of picking this these four teams is how is your current roster and they are and and is it as good as the games that you won and will it be as good as the games that you won in the playoffs will it be as good depending on how your current day roster is and right. FSU lost their quarterback yeah yeah and they are saying we don't think that your team is even close to as good as they could be without that guy so then losing so your like, quarterback just that's your season's just over so I don't agree it. with it because like in what sport do you have like is your team um judged by like an injury and they're totally wiping away where you finish in the season that'd be like if you're in first place in the MLB and then you're like Garrett Cole gets hurt and like they just take away you being in first and like we're gonna make you a wild card team because you don't have your Cy Young pitcher. But anymore. they don't it's have like, to adhere to that. They don't correct college like, football is like they're looking for the matter. best matchup. Like Michigan, Molly Wappen, FSU is not as good as Michigan playing against Bama. Right, Michigan. Right, they're looking for if the they best have product. The quarterback. That's such an A-list right. matchup. It is an A. It's the Rose Bowl. That's Those sick. colors get out of here. Right. It's it's also like again, I'm exactly with you. It's not like I'm paying attention, but like it's college football is massive. You kind of pay attention loosely, and then as things tighten up at the end, you're too. And I I was pretty much on the side of FSU. Like how the fuck they're undefeated, they have to get in. And then we were talking about it Saturday night, and people were like, who would be favored more, like in a game? Would it be like Bama or? Georgia or like te- or like FSU. Yeah. I'm like they would be massive underdogs. I think against everybody. So Correct. then it's like then what the fuck are you doing? Right. You want like those the matchups that we have. Those games are going to be awesome. awesome. The games don't matter. Like the games that mattered in the past don't matter. All that matters is looking forward. But which it sucks, does. Which is stupid. Shit. I agree. It does, yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, and like these teams like FSU and Georgia, they schedule these games based off of strength of schedule. Like they knew that they needed it. Like an FSU team knew that they needed and strength they pumped of schedule. LSU. They did. Yeah. They they scheduled SEC games. They're like we're going to fucking beat these guys. And they did, and they still kind of get. I actually it think sucks. it's because it's because of the injury. It's all. It's, I think this is all part of the mechanism where it's all the other sports and leagues have a very clear situation and a clear path to the championship and the playoffs. With college football, look at this. We're talking about right now. People are going crazy. Yeah, the it's controversy genius. is a part of it. It's genius. Next year they're getting rid of it. This is a, this is. I it. know, which I don't like. I think Magic. I think the more people talk about it, the more people yell at each other about it. That just means like Magic, you got look the at juice. this matchup. You said like everyone's fucking coming themselves because it's Alabama versus Michigan. Next year, you'll get way more of those oh, matchups. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. So it's like way cooler, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. For just the general, you're going to miss out on the controversy, but you're going to gain way more. Like I was saying a couple shows ago, you're going to get home games now in the playoffs. Yeah. Which is cool. So like this, and, this Michigan game could have been at Michigan. Alabama is going to Michigan. Pretty dope. No, sad. it is. I'm saying, but go. like it's that's Ooh. different. Watching Alabama go play in Michigan would be insane. Dude, think about yeah, that. That's like you're in an alternate game. world. We're going to like, go. get like 10 Super Bowls next year. Yeah. Like that's like how big every one of those games yeah. is going to be. I, be. I feel dirty even talking about it because I'm just not a college football oh, guy. So yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's people's lives. Like that talk, that committee is people's like. Dude, Dude that's that my... whole program. Like Florida State not go, or not going to the playoff sets their program back oh. for like my group years chat because was they go all life and death yesterday. Dude, all they're recruiting, all the millions of dollars oh, they come yeah. in, they made it to the playoff. They got like, and now they just don't get any of that Dude. because the committee was like, eh, your quarterbacks hurt. Look at this King Barbooty walking up in a fucking <laughs> tailor made Malvin. Fucking, he doesn't want to be on the show. He doesn't want to be on the show. He's, he's the show. like getting me out. Did of you guys like... see the video of the Michigan players <laughs> reacting to Alabama getting chosen? No. Yeah, they yeah. were they were sitting at a banquet hall like watching the Bar selection Booty. show. Come on over here. You're Michael, not gonna come on the show. Michael come Bar on, Booty, dude. No, keep him behind. He's a, he likes to Bar just... Booty. So uh, Bar Booty is like our king at Taylor Made behind the scenes. Obviously, we owe our entire lives to him. I want you real quick. Come here. Without I just want giving you so people can see the outfit. With you, without with you, without giving away anything. Try and be as vague and as teasing as possible. What would you say? Just talk about the just talk about the Tiger Woods stuff, okay. without, without saying, saying what happened. a single thing. Nobody knows what it. happened. Um, <laughs> get that thing close to your mouth. Get that thing close to your mouth. Guy's face. <laughs> so he knows. Let's mic up to the face. There we go. Is there, are we good? You're yeah, good yeah. there. So I think the big thing about the moment is Frankie didn't think we were getting the moment. I didn't. No. That's gonna be the whole video. And that's be... what I'm waiting to see. <laughs> oh, you're, you, it's going to be entertaining because they're I, with the I, I think roller coaster. At one point, I think he said, "Like, why are we with these guys? They can't get us anybody." <laughs> yeah. I, I, no, no, I believe it. I believe well, it. I was like, I was like, they're just toying us. Now. Yeah. I was like, we're basically just meat being dangled in front of Tiger. We're getting squeezed we're out. We kept saying, "That's squeezed right." Out, squeeze. and then we throw him a nice juicy steak. I know you guys did, and it worked. If I had to describe the moment, I would say easily 
the piece of the year. Yeah. I think so. I think Not that's the right. for this thing. And also probably Frankie's highest to lowest point or lowest to highest point lowest in his life. Point. Of, life, <laughs> of your yeah. life, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In an eight minutes span. Yeah. I mean, it happened fast. <laughs> we were all low. We were all yeah. low. We were all. Like and this. I would say, even, I mean, the photo shoot, we probably did 200 things. I would put that up there as one of the best things oh. I've ever seen oh. at the photo shoot. Wow. Which is wow. a lot coming from you because you're very. Yeah, I'd probably see 900 this. things and I would right. put that top, top two. Wow. wow. Barbudi, how'd you get involved oh, in all of this? How, how are you at Tyler Made? Because you're a pretty, you're a big fish at a pretty big company. And I'm not going to pump your tires too big much. Big fish, but. big pond. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I mean, you're a big deal for us. Like, yeah. you know, that you're our guy. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. I think probably a lot of credit owed to, to what you guys do and, and, and that world kind of expanded. And I think, you know, coming into golf, that stuff didn't really exist. It was very old, traditional and, uh, you know, we've kind of switched up the way we looked at things and, and we brought you guys on. And then I feel like everyone kind of followed suit. And it's been, you know, really interesting. I think Dude, what was it like for you to like go to whoever you had to go to <laughs> and be like problematic? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say it was probably problematic. Like uh, you walk like, into a room, you're like, you know, what we should add to this barstool sports. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. And I and I think it was a risk. I mean, for I sure. I think a lot of reservations, but also I think people. You know, during that time we we're coming through COVID, I think people saw what was happening. A lot yeah. more people were playing golf, and golf you know, I think a lot of people looked at what, what you guys do is very relatable. So um, they took a risk. You know, they took a risk on me. They took a risk on you, and I think it's paid off pretty well. <laughs> I think so. Too. Yeah, you yeah. being the guy to bring this like influencer and like average golfer to the world of a major golf manufacturer is pretty. Yeah, it was a bold choice, a bold move, something that we didn't really see coming on our mm -hmm. end of like ever being a possibility of being a part of. And now it seems as though it's like the norm, it's like the norm. Yeah, like you guys really paved the way for that. I mean, obviously, other brands were like kind of doing it in like a smaller way, but you went all in. And yeah, you're like, this is good. These like we show up to the kingdom. There's pictures of us next to Tiger right. Woods. And you like, started, you, guys you basically, really... you basically <coughs> started treating us like tailor-made athletes. You yeah. started, we came to media day. Now we've been to media day four days in a row. And like yeah. you say, we go to the kingdom, we get fit just like the pros. Like yeah. you guys embracing that idea was. And you brought bold. our fans along on the ride. Cause right. now they feel like they're a part of like that whole thing now too, which is cool. Yeah. I think an important thing for us is, you know, it, and I would say the company is very much like this, the top to bottom, like we all put on our pants the same way guys, girls, top to bottom. And I think, uh, you know, the way we treat you guys is the way we treat athletes because we look at you the same way. You're you're very important to us. You're very much assets for we're our brand. To too. Um, you know, you legitimize a lot of what we do and I'm sure vice versa. Oh, for sure. Oh, it's big also, time. We say too, like we got so lucky that it's you guys that we partner with because <laughs> A, like, like, you might have been bouncing around to companies. Well, you guys are like, <laughs> it seems like you're in your golden era of Taylor. I mean, yeah. every single person that works there is like the best person of all time. Awesome. Like, I think yeah. about to like, I think yeah. back to like the late nineties of Borelli's, like when I was like younger, <laughs> we had like the golden era of all the workers, like all the managers, the cooks, <laughs> Things were the hitting. waiters, the bus boys, yeah. they all got together at night and they all like played pickup basketball and they're all on the same softball team. Like you guys are all legitimately best friends. Yeah. Like you have such a good crew there from top to bottom. It's yeah. actually probably really hard to find. Yeah. That kind of crew. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really cool. Everyone's loves golf. And I think that's like at the core of it. Huge. Like we're all golfers yeah. as a company. We're we all golfers. We all love world. golf. I think of our boy, Tony Starks, when he stood up at the Pebble thing a couple weeks ago and yeah. he gave us a little spiel about yeah. the youth on course. And he yeah. gave the spiel that like, we're all kind of boozing and like telling yeah. stories and yeah. he gets up and kind of commands the room. But he gave a very like, at the end of the day, our whole lives are about loving golf. Together. <laughs> we're all like, fuck yeah. Well, it's very true. I mean, even like when we were watching the game last night, I was like, can someone put on the hero? Highlight? <laughs> yeah. you, know, like, yeah. you know, I think if, if you golf, it's number one in your life. And, you know, I will say as I've worked at TaylorMade and that, like my love for sports has changed and my love of golf is kind of elevated. And um, yeah, it's a really cool place to be for sure. I was saying earlier too, like the fact that it's you guys is so huge because you guys have so much stuff that we can show off like the creative side yeah and the head covers and the hats the and like all the stuff yeah. yeah like other golf companies don't have that yeah. and so we happen to be partners with the guys that you give us so much shit to work with yeah yeah our product teams are amazing i mean they're very a intuitive but but on top of it and you know i think uh you know our exec team really lets everyone kind of create and cook and and that shows in, in the work you know you you have a lot of companies out there where you have people kind of holding people back us they're kind of like go you know and i think that's you know allowed us to do what we do and our product seems to allow what they do to innovate and do all those things so 
Unreal. Yeah, big stuff coming out. Really big stuff coming out. We're all re- really excited yep. about it. I'm like just itching to start talking about it and <laughs> new products and new videos and just yeah, I'm just Dude. I'm very very excited. Obviously the Tiger stuff, but it just Dude, feels like this is going to be a like big year. Like, Nelly Corda, like she was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah, she we was were talking great. about awesome. Well, it's she great like, and and I feel like every time you know, when we started doing stuff, I mean, we were nervous. We were like, to put these guys with the athletes. And every time the athletes leave, it's like their most energized moment. Yeah. And I feel like it comes out in the other stuff that we do because they have this energized and happiness. Yep. And then they're creating great content beyond that because they're just leaving you guys just having fun. I think, you know, you get to see Love the that. competitive nature of everything. And, uh, yep. you know, I think of like the first years where we're doing anything and it's like, that's all these guys talk about for like three hours after. So it really leaves them with a good experience and, and you know, allows them to want to do stuff for us and enjoy that day. So we got a yeah. lot of videos coming out. No, you guys are awesome. Yep. Um, God, we're like three years into this thing at this point, the Taylor made deal. Uh, yeah, three of many, I hope. I crazy? hope to get to okay. do it a long Fuck time yeah, with you guys. I so. agree. Call right. in, Tom. Uh, yeah. Michael Barbuti. Yeah, Michael. thanks for having me on. You're the man. Taylor oh, yeah, made yeah. golf. Thank you, Michael. All right, thanks, Barbuti. Thank you, Barbuti. Appreciate you. Best dressed man in yep. uh, in golf. King. Dude, always. Inspires me to wear Just cooler stuff. Just always the best. Inspires me to wear cooler stuff. So cool. Like, it's yeah. cool oh, he's clothing. so cool. He's got a huge Jerry Garcia tattoo yeah. on his arm. Oh, this yeah, guy, yeah. That guy's cool as shit, man. Yep. <laughs> and they're, I mean, aside from us, they just, they're partnering with the right, like, boutique cool. Malvin. Well, yeah. Like, yeah, no. they just know what they're doing. All of their, um, I like Taylor made. all of their um, collaborations are 10 out of 10. Yep. That comic book golf ball that they came out with the TP5. Really cool. I have that just, driver cover. Yeah, me, me too. Me and Dan. Yep. The Boom Pow one. I can't take it off my. I cannot take it off out of my bag. Dude, it's I got that New Orleans one. That uh, the coffee. Oh yeah, yeah coffee yeah, yeah. and like golf or yep. whatever. It's it is a Kith collaboration. I'm really into Man. those new. I think they're called like um, Barrel Barrel head covers. Right. It's like a head covers go in like these different waves. It feels like of what's in and what's out. And I'm really and I don't even think we sell one. I would love to get one. Going. Dude, I'd love to get a bar stool golf. It doesn't one. taper off. It's like the we just like the one. Just we, I was over. like transfusion. The one. only one was that Owens mixture transfusion. Yeah, we gotta make more. And it wasn't like the best top. quality, was it? No, it was kind of. It was all right. We can make a cool one. We really can. I because th- I'm seeing them a lot on. If TaylorMade's doing it, we just know it's like it's in right now. Yeah, they're they're like leading. It seems like if they do it, everyone else kind of follows. We can. They're make the leaders really cool in the space. One. They are leaders in the thought space. Thought leaders in the space. How the aisles doing? All right, actually. Okay. They, yeah, it's one of the more bizarre seasons I've ever watched. Because they've been, what, they lead games for a long time? They've then they led, lose. out of 23 games, they've led 19 of them. And they've <laughs> lost, like, 14 of them. So it's like, yeah, it's a lot. But they're losing all these games in overtime and shootouts. So they're in, they're, like, right in the mix. They're, they're like, a point behind Washington for third place. They're, they're in a playoff spot right now. So okay. they're, they're grinding back. Bush Matt Barzell man. was sick the other night. Have you ever heard of just like a guy being sick and missing a game? I was thinking about him just sitting in his hotel room, I watching was... his team just play. He was in Florida. He was just sick, like pooping. Probably just like him. sick. Matt Barzell out. I'm pooping. He was just like, I'm sick. I was like, you're not playing tonight? He's just like, I'm, I don't feel good. He's like, I feel like shit. Dude, I was so <laughs> sick. <laughs> I, was like, All right, I never. He was really sick. Last like, weekend, I was so sick. I wouldn't have been able to play. Right. And you, it's so because he's, they're humans. So they're going to get sick. You, yeah. but you, also but you never think about that with athletes. You never think about that with an athlete. And you hear it all the time in baseball, like a pitcher will be out because he had like diarrhea. Like I, I feel like yeah. pitchers always get diarrhea. Yeah, can't, or, you can't pitch if you just shit. Right, diarrhea, shit on the yeah. mound. You're shitting all or over a, the place. Or a bad nail that'll happen from time to time. I miss the days of playing hooky as a kid, when oh. you would just stay oh, home. So oh, I did it so much. Oh, dude, dude I, I was the it. best at making my mom feel bad for me. Just yeah. like. I had the worst nights of sleep, and all I thought about was like, I don't want to make you upset that I'm not gonna go to school, but I just I can't today. We call that <laughs> we call that manipulation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I know you're gonna be upset. I can't go today, but I'm trying. You're, you're I'll, predicting I'll, her moves. I'll be like, I'll try, but if her. you want me to get more sick, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> just like, it's like, well, I guess I'm gonna get everyone that's yeah. really sick. <laughs>
inside and it yeah. kind of took away that like really hot feeling of like oh man if i catch this too good in the center it's just gonna fly and i'm not gonna know the distance they really regulated like where it's gonna pop off um of the of the center of the club face so it does make a big difference like if you're in the market for 790s make sure you get these new ones because for me it's changed my game significantly i feel like i have way more control brendan and i just went out to the golf course we found a couple empty holes and we were filming some stuff it's just like for the first swing i had all day which is like a nine iron it's just smooth just right onto the green like it, i feel so comfortable with those 790s i feel like i don't have to i don't have to do too much there's not too much action there it's just let the club do the work and it's i've never felt anything like that more than with the 790s yeah the overall design of the latest generation of the acclaimed p790 franchise produces better launch and playability and long irons and enhanced control in the scoring club so get your p790 irons from TaylorMade right now at taylormadegolf.com um bushman do we need to do a from the gallery yes okay Alex i got says one yes you got oh, one yeah yeah i got Sweet. one from taylor may golf by the way Ooh, they're sponsoring this barbooty that's an easy one that's an easy one um this is tyler from minnesota from the guy for play at barcelosports.com shoot us an email this one was sent in um when you returned from italy and it said, this got me thinking as I'm listening to the Frankie Returns episode, by the way, my favorite truly is Black Cherry. Uh, is there anything you guys have ever witnessed that will last 2,000 years? Are we, Are you saying me witnessing or like historical events? I don't really know what that means. I think like that means monument? like when he's talking about like the Colosseum that he saw and seeing things. Like, have you seen things that you think will last another 2,000 years? Huh. Like, oh, I was thinking like. Okay. Like modern things, you think? For me, I was yeah. even questioning like Mount Rushmore. And gone. Like, when Mount Rushmore be there in 2000 years, I think it's gone. It's kind of lame anyway. I've answer. been there. That's is a good it? answer. It's not that it's great. Sculpted into the earth. I but was I think, thinking of like a building, but a nuclear disaster is going to get rid of that building. And I don't know if it's like wind or whatever that would get rid of it. I or think. even you could have like if somebody just takes over the United States of America, they're just going to knock that thing. They're like, we're not keeping that mountain. No, I don't think there's place. anything in America that's going to last 2000 years. What about like the Statue of Liberty? You think that's up there that's in 2000 years? Rising sea levels will be gone in about a year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd think that like whoever... If, Next question. If, if, we're, if we're still around as humans and America somehow is still around 2000 years, which would be against all odds. A miracle. Of, it would be legitimately probably the longest running oh, I mean, empire or like country ever. Yeah. I mean, has a country Rome ever, had a really long thousand run. years is like the max. Thousand, yeah, pretty much, and yeah. that's Rome. Yeah, Rome was like a thousand years. Or what was Genghis Khan? Like, how long not was that? Not long. very long. That was just like his lifetime, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, you're talking about like a religion. democratic society, like right, that's, right. I don't know how long those last. Well, it's not less than two thousand, which is unfortunate. Like we're talking about something that's going to end. Totally, everything comes to an end. Um, yeah, I don't think anything. We're not even at two fifty yet. No, it's crazy. No, we're pretty. We're very new. It's scary. And it feels like things are ending soon. <laughs> it's like yeah. things are ending. That's really yeah. That oh, seems yeah. to be the sentiment online. Yeah. Like we're closer to the end than the beginning. I think we last 500 years of the USA. Country? Yeah. Okay. Do you think USA is closer to the end than the beginning? The United no. States of America? No, I don't. We just have to make sure that, yeah. I don't actually. I do. I think we are at a heightened. I think the internet puts us in a heightened sense of how bad things are. But overall, if you look at like murder rates and shit like that, things are actually getting better. Hopefully. And our military is sick. We well, got we got a military. great military, yeah. It'd be tough to take us down. Gossa National is just going to be overrun with weeds and stuff in 2,000 years. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think so. 2,000 Corner. years? I think so. Um, what do you someone, think Amen Corner is doing right now? Somebody playing there? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, someone's playing. playing there. I mean, AI is taking great. this whole thing down. I watched that Mission Impossible movie. Yeah. Do you also, and Joe Biden think that's taking the world down? Big time. I mean, yeah, it's going to take over. And then what was it's, his it's be a He ran out of the theater. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I just got to. We've got a man, a man known to sprint <laughs> ran out of the theater got and this. forgot where he was. He's like, we got some what? meeting. What, <laughs> yeah. what am I wrong for? All the, all the br debr debriefings, everything, they were just like, he's like, this is all bullshit. Me watch Tom Cruise ramp off a cliff over the it's motorcycle. Right. And he's like, we got to do something about this. Call everybody, get them together. <laughs> um, I heard he literally saying it like in a speech. No, we talked a little bit about this. Yeah, probably around the, the Frankie Italy episode. It's just where like Madison Square Garden's not going to be there in like a hundred years no they might move it with the next 20 because right. they want to like redo penn station and 100%. shit like, they might move next year it's Who just knows? there's something about stone there's something about glass that doesn't last i think you might have said that glass doesn't last mm. just like where glass doesn't Damn, stone does hard, stuff, you mentioned the stone cave painting is gonna <laughs> last forever but you're talking about glass bro, buildings if there's, glass. A lo if there's a loud enough boom the glass breaks right boom you know what was um like a factually incorrect part of the mission impossible movie that Please. i found was when they were in venice and they went to that like rave they wouldn't be able to have that because of the vibrations i learned that when i was in venice oh really 
Yeah, that you can't like play because all the wood, boom, right? boom, all like, the wood that it's on top of would just like air pockets would get in and they would crumble. All oh, right, you were saying that. Do you imagine if Venice, all of it just crumbled. How about the fact that that movie Mission Impossible takes place a lot, uh, around a lot of the world? But I was really into it because it like went by my hotel in Rome. It was like really cool to watch Spanish steps. down the Spanish Steps, literally right by. You could see the entrance <laughs> to my hotel. They they're riding by. I I'm, think. I think the thing that's going to last is going to be something that nobody thinks. It, it's going to go under the radar, like your East Meadow visor. I think two thousand <laughs> yeah. years from now. Oh yeah, there'll be, the be like relics and shit. It'll be like, like a shoe. Find... It'll be this shoe will somehow like through time yeah. just hit the right corner of, yeah. of the earth and be under some rubble two thousand years from now. It's right. not going to be a fucking. But statue. will there be something that's still standing no. from oh. here in two thousand years that people are like, no. "This is shit." Go visit and shit. No statue of David. Yeah, you're like in, you're anticipating people if there's even going to be like humans around two thousand years to like continuously keep it safe. I don't think and, we got eh, two thousand. We're kind of ramping up there quickly. And, and if it like, just falls in the wrong hands, they get rid of it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, this means Which is why it's me. so amazing that all that stuff survived. Yeah, right. Agreed. Because um, other bad guys just took it over. Right. Yeah, yeah we'll keep this here. This is kind of cool. Shout out to Delta. Um, brand new plane took out here. And uh, do we have a techniques ad? Oh, so yeah. we'll talk about it during that. I know what you're going to say because we talked about it, but yeah, it's a huge shout out. It's amazing. Yeah, we'll talk Some about that later. people probably heard that in the ad read. Oh, okay, because we probably already talked because we're winding down here. Yeah, I watched it. I watched um, the movie and I paired my techniques to my screen, which felt like wow. I was living in the future. Delta yeah. has Bluetooth capabilities on their on their um, planes now, and I watched Mission Impossible in like wow. complete 3D listening experience like I was in the movie theater. Like legit, like bullets going by my head and it was amazing <laughs> that new the new wi-fi on those new planes rips too. Yep. i watched i was watching youtube videos like i was You're... on the ground amazing all right let's go get all some right. lunch man i'm a pretty hungry person starving yeah. all right well um Bars classic championship so we got two days full of stuff coming out from here classic we'll champ video. what a hat classic champ uh <laughs> we'll uh we'll be back on thursday per usual hit it hard do we have a video hard. coming out tomorrow the wednesday Oh, Danny yeah. Rapp and Night Grant Mine. Horvat. That's right. We played oh, a match. Hell at, yeah. We played a match at uh, Trump in Trump International up in Palm Beach. Um, super windy day. We played put all that the way on back. the thumbnail, you know. Trump. Trump. Yeah. Trump. Just get his just get his face on there. Just put like Trump golf controversial. Put it out on the <laughs> yeah. thumbnail. Uh, great, great, really good golf course. It was blowing hard. <laughs> we played all the way back. It was it was good. It was fun. Yeah. Amazing. Excited. So that's Bad Boys coming out today. And people are listening. Wednesday. Tomorrow. Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Tomorrow. Wednesday. Make sure you go watch that Grand Horvat smoothest swing on YouTube. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. I interview him. We, we play a match. It's fun. It's good. Okay. So it's check awesome. that out on YouTube. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard.